Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Mayor and Ahead the Board of Mayor and Alderman for the City of Hendersonville, Tennessee. This is June 28th. It's approximately 7 p.m. Um, we want to begin as we typically do, and that's with a prayer and a pledge. Fortunately, tonight we have Pastor Will Duncan. He is the pastor at Rome Baptist Church on Avondale Road. He's going to provide an opening prayer for us. We appreciate that very much, and that's going to be followed with a pledge. Um, uh, we appreciate, Pastor Duncan, very much what your church does for our community, what you've been doing for our community for many, many years. So we're going to join you in prayer. Thank you. May we bow. Eternal Father in heaven, we come tonight with our hearts and minds focused towards heaven and heaven alone. We stretch our hands to thee because we know other help we know, and we realize if thou withdraw thyself from us, whether shall we go? Before we further go tonight, Father, we pray for the sick and the shut-ins everywhere. Remember the officer that met with the tragedy on last night. You know more than the doctors know how to handle the case that is before you. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity and for traveling grace that we have been here tonight at this appointed place at this appointed time. You suffered no hurt, harm, danger to befall upon us while we was on our way. We pray tonight, God, our Heavenly Father, for our nation. Pray for our leaders. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would direct their minds and their hearts to do the thing that would be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. And tonight we ask you, Heavenly Father, out of all sincereness, that you bless the leaders, Heavenly Father, of this city. Give them wisdom and give them knowledge how to lead and protect and do the thing that will be pleasing and acceptable in our sight. They are working for the benefit of humanity and mankind. Thank you, God our Heavenly Father, for your dog and son, Jesus. We realize that we are going through some trying times. We realize that things are not like they should be. And you said that all things work together for the good of them that serve the Lord. We thank you tonight, God our Heavenly Father, that while we're here, we came, Heavenly Father, tonight to transact business. And we ask you to give their minds and their hearts and give the spirit, Heavenly Father, of the Holy and the Divine Spirit. Bless these officials tonight that they will lead this community in the way that it should go. And in all things, let them put their trust in thee. We thank you tonight, our God, our Heavenly Father, for our officials in Washington, all those, Heavenly Father, who are working to do the thing that make our world and our country a better place to live. We thank you for the grace. We thank you for the mercy. And we thank you most of all for the children, Heavenly Father, that we walk before, that some way, somehow, they may see the God of life and may see the spirit of the holy and divine spirit in us, that they may walk in the way that thou would have them to go. Thank you again tonight, Heavenly Father, for bringing us here. We realize that we didn't have to be here, but you spared us to see one more day. In all things that we do, let us praise thee, give thee thanks, and humble ourselves that the mankind of this world that's not saved may see Jesus in us, that they may walk upright, that our world and our nation, our homes, and our families may be better before thee. These blessings and all other blessings we ask in our darling son Jesus' name and for his precious and divine sake we pray, amen. Amen. Again, that's Pastor Will Duncan from Rome Baptist Church. We appreciate you very, very much. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge to the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have got all 13 of us here. I'm going to um, entertain a motion to accept our agenda. We have a motion from Alderman Waters and a second from Alderman Dixon. Um, I need to mention one thing. I need to mention a couple things, actually. Please acknowledge item number six is waiving our two-week, excuse me, item number seven is waiving our two-week rule. Also, I need to um, request an amendment, entertain an amendment, or make an amendment that we uh, eliminate the consent agenda. 
We'll put items one and two. We will put those as 11A and 11B. Both the items, I think, are going to generate some discussion, um, so it makes sense to go ahead and remove them uh, and consider them individually. Um, I'll make that motion that we uh, take items one and two and make them uh, 11A and 11B. I have a second from Alderman Petrelli. Can we go ahead and vote on that? I see we have a couple other lights. Any discussion on that item? All those in favor of removing the consent agenda and placing items one and two as items 11A and 11B, please press the green button. Not quite yet. And those opposed, press the red one. Go ahead. Thank you. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I had a couple people with their... Uh, uh, with their buttons lit up. Alder Alderman Edwards. I'm going to remove item 7, and that's just going to be moved to the July meeting. That will okay. be July 28th. Okay, so you are the, uh, the sole sponsor there, so we can do that. Okay. Uh, Alderman Peterson. Uh, yes, Mayor. I'd like to ask if I can have item 9 moved up. Would you like to become item 7? Can it go further up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, C certainly, that's you, you could you could ask that. We ha there are some items on here that we absolutely have to make sure we get to tonight. Otherwise, we have to have a special meeting. Oh, okay, Mayor. I'll take number seven. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion to um, uh, move item nine to uh, item seven. I need a second for that. I have a second from Alderman Waters. Any discussion on that one item? All those in favor of moving, moving item. Nine up to seven, please signify by hitting your green button. Those opposed, please hit your red one, but not quite yet. There we go. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Alderman Skidmore, did I see you? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. On, on your agenda tonight, on uh, other agenda items, um, Alderman Collins, and I've been discussion, in discussions tonight, and we would like to ask if we can just remove the item 12 for an additional meeting. We should have it resolved by then. And um, uh, okay. okay. So we have a motion to uh, move item 12 into our only meeting in July, which is uh, uh, the, typically the second meeting in July. So we have a motion to second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of... Uh, Deferring item, which one was that again? I'm sorry. 12. 12 uh, into our next meeting, which will be uh, in, end of July. Please press the green button, those opposed, and you can go ahead and press the red one. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Alderman Skidmore, anything else? Thank you, Board. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to move item 6 to be under what is known as currently item 3. So that's the term limits moved under three. So that would be number, well, we moved one and two to the bottom, correct? We did. Okay, so number three is actually number one. Number six would become number two. And then um, agenda item number eight, move uh, the number of alderman seats, move that up to number three. So we've got a motion. In a second, can you explain that to us again? Sure. Um, we would move item number six to what is no now known as item number two because okay. you moved items one and two to the bottom, and then take item number eight and move it to item what would be item known as number three now because there was no three that existed anyway. Okay. Um, I'd like to throw my two cents on that. The first four items on there are there intentionally uh, in that order because we have to come up with a budget tonight. We really owe it to Grace Place to go ahead and come up with a decision for them because we have to advertise before the next meeting. Yeah, I'm not moving Grace Place. It, okay. it would be underneath Grace Place. Okay. Um, we also, uh, we need to, um, we're, this is the, let's see, uh, zoning code. Um, you're going to hear from me on an item that's coming up that uh, is timely on that, that we need to get to. I'm very worried that we may not get to everything tonight. I'll withdraw. I appreciate that. Uh, who is the second? Alderman Cunningham? Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other um, uh, any other items on the agenda? So we've got here's where we're on the agenda right now. Um, 
We're acknowledging item number seven. Excuse me, that's been removed. Okay, item seven has been removed. Number nine has become number seven. Items one and two are now 11A and 11B. They'll be considered separately. And item 12 has been removed. I believe that's every, I believe that covers all the amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number nine is number seven. All those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please press the red button. Those opposed, please press the green one. I did that absolutely wrong, didn't I? All those in favor, please press the green button. Those opposed, how hard is that? Please press the red one. That passes unanimously, thank you. Uh, next round, presentations. Um, okay, where's David? Super. David, will you join me up here, please? Okay. Michelle has come with you? Super. Okay. <laughs> He's been here a couple times before. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you all after I finish reading this to introduce yourselves, why you're here, what your role is, and talk a little bit more about this, uh, something pretty cool that's coming up. Uh, let me read this proclamation. Whereas it is on this day we recognize the Gold Star families in our Hendersonville, Tennessee community and honor the memory of their loved ones who died while serving our nation on military duty and whereas in an instant a family is thrust into a group in which none wants to lay claim, one defined by selflessness, humility, and grace that of a Gold Star family. And whereas the debt of our fallen warriors and their families is one for which our country can never return or sufficiently express our gratitude for their sacrifice, Americans enjoy the freedom and liberty on which our nation was founded. And whereas we recognize the sacrifice that every Gold Star family has made and will continue to make, living each day with the memory of their loved ones in their thoughts. And whereas we pray for peace and comfort to come to their hearts as I know that we have etched the name of their fallen soldier, marine, sailor, airman, or coast guardsman in our heart with them. Now, therefore, I, Jamie Clary, Mayor of the City of Hendersonville, Tennessee, do proclaim June 29, 2022 as Gold Star Family Day in Hendersonville. And I encourage all citizens to join me in this worthy observance by displaying the flag and holding appropriate ceremonies as a public expression of our nation's gratitude and respect for our Gold Star families. Um, David and Michelle are going to tell you a little bit about something that's happening tomorrow in relation to Gold Star families, and they're going to, exp they're going to explain to you exactly what a Gold Star family is. Thank you all. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Michelle Owens, and I'm the president of the Hendersonville Rotary Club. Um, and um, this year, our project that we have taken up is that we are we have erected a Gold Star Memorial marker um, at Memorial Park between the First Responders Memorial and the and the fountain. Um, I want to thank the City of Hendersonville and the Parts Department for their partnership in, in making this come come to fruition. Um, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a dedication ceremony for um, the marker. Um, and everyone is welcome to come. We've got a great um, program. We're going to have a four-plane flyover. It, it's going to be exciting. I'm going to let David give you all the details um, as our chair. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, as Michelle mentioned, we'll start at 10 o'clock with a flyover uh, from local pilots. They will come in and they will execute the, what's known as the missing man formation, which is the way pilots honor when they have lost one of their own and we'll be honoring the families. Uh, we've been able to locate eight families in the Hendersonville area and I expect to have over 35 family members there representing those those families and they represent veterans who have lost their life all the way from World War II to uh, Carter Ross who many of you may know was a Marine Corps cadet at Hendersonville High School went into Marine Corps and then was uh, tragically killed in an airplane accident maybe three to four years ago now. Uh, his family will be there. Uh, two of the family, two of the veterans that are killed are winners of the Silver Star, second highest award you can get for bravery in the, in the armed services. And, uh, and in fact, one of the families, Arthur Stark, is a Silver Star recipient, was killed in World War II, and the VFW post 
in Hendersonville's full name is the Graves Ray Stark VFW Post 9851, and he's one of the three people that the post was named after. So it's been exciting to get to know and meet, and I'm looking forward tomorrow to actually meet some of these family members that are a, a historic part of our local community through the service of their son. A Gold Star family, by the way, is any service member who has lost their life while serving on active duty, whether in combat or in, as I just mentioned, in a training accident type situation. Uh, so we look forward to seeing everybody there tomorrow. It'll be a great day. Our, our keynote speaker is Commissioner uh, Major General Tommy Baker, Commissioner of Veteran Services for the state of Tennessee. And uh, so we look to have a good day. The weather's going to be about 80 degrees and sunny, so it'll be a nice day for, for our event. And uh, so please come out and help us honor the true heroes of Hendersonville. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you David. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Next item we have are public hearings. We have two of those, and the first one is a public hearing for Ordinance 2022-11 to consider the following budget comparisons in accordance with the Municipal Budget Law of 1982. That's TCA 6-56-206. We have one person signed up for that, and that's Stephen Puckett. Stephen, this is, certainly isn't directed at you, but a couple months ago, uh, we adopted the, the rules we have for citizen comments, also for um, public hearings. So I'm going to read those, and it covers everybody who's oh, yeah. going to speak in the next little bit. Speakers must identify themselves by name and address. Public comment shall be limited to five minutes per person, which time is not transferable to other speakers. All comments are to be directed to the presiding officer, not to aldermen, city staff, or other members of the public. Comments must address issues, not individuals or personalities. Personal attacks shall not be tolerated. Comments may support or oppose particular issues or measures, but the motives of those with differing views shall not be questioned or attacked. Malicious comments will not be allowed. Speeches for or against particular candidates running for public office shall not be allowed. Stephen Puckett, Sanders Ferry Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Stephen Puckett. I live, reside at 228 Sanders Ferry Road, apartment 821, and I will say the parliamentarian in me greatly appreciates you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, of course, this is the public hearing on the uh, budget and our tax rate. Um, part of that budget is I'm going to talk about tonight is actually part that appears to be missing. And there's going to be a later discussion on uh, what to do afterwards with that. And that is related to the 1% that's typically reserved, has been traditionally paying, paying off the debt for the Beatty Farm. And in the future was to be set aside for uh, pay, uh, building a reserve to help our citizens be able to uh, outbid a developer if there's a hostile developer try, trying to develop land that would be very damaging to our community to be developed, um, basically the Betty Farm situation. Um, I would strongly suggest that the board add that, that money back in. Um, or at least delay the vote on the future aspect of it until um, you can develop some sort of alternative, whether it's a checkbox on, you know, a donation checkbox on the tax bill, if that's legally allowed, some way to ensure that we don't find ourselves back in the same situation that we were with Baby Farm, where we had citizens trying to protect their community from a very hostile development and the city having to borrow money to step in. Uh, in fact, that kind of ties into what the mayor uh, mentioned last time, and that is thinking forward and having honest discussions with our citizens about uh, where we're going to be at, uh, but more importantly, what the expectations we are as citizens, especially how are we going to address this massive infrastructure debt that has built up over the years in because, I mean, we're looking at probably over $100 million worth of infrastructure debt that has built up over the decades. And, of course, one of the dangers is that developers have weaponized that against us. Um, in Sarnes, the Sarnes Ferry community is very familiar with that. Uh, we were in uh, Henners, the Hennersville Auditorium, uh, if you all remember, related to that. So we need to make sure we're fiscally safe but also make sure that we're not in putting ourselves in a position where the where our budget can be weaponized against us. Another issue is something that comes from the state. Um, I'm asking you to put in a line item 
if you don't already have one to set aside um, purchase says set up cooling centers and uh, provide water to via the election commission to voters uh, in early voting we've already had triple digit temperatures um, in the city and unfortunately the state has changed this the law so that private entities that usually would step in and cover these things are now barred or they have to play mother may i with the secretary of state um, which makes it so that if you know a church comes in and hands people water in line and at a voting booth without the permission of the secretary of state that church could potentially as i understand it be charged with a felony so we need to uh, municipal bodies like the city and the county can step in but uh, so if we don't already have it in the budget we need to make those provisions um, especially so that the safety of our citizens is put forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, next, we have a public hearing for Ordinance 2022-13 for the purpose of receiving public comment on proposed revisions to the zoning ordinance for the city of Hendersonville. We have nobody signed up for that. Next, we have uh, approval of minutes from the June 14, 2022 meeting. I have a motion from uh, Alderman Hayes and a second. I believe that was from Alderman Dixon. Okay. Uh, any discussion on that? All those in favor of approving the minutes as they were provided to you in your packet for June 14th, please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. We have two abstentions, and those are from uh, Alderman Phillips and Alderman Edwards, and it passes 11 to 0. Next on our agenda, we have citizens' comments. We have several people signed up for those, and the, min and the uh, rules that are read just a few minutes ago apply to citizens' comments as well. First person we have is John Prentice, Airfloat Drive. Alderman John Prentice, Airfloat Drive. John Prentice, 111 Airfloat Drive. And that title went away many years ago, thankfully. I'd like to talk about the issue of the number of aldermen that we have. Might be appropriate to have a little history, historical comment. In 1986, we had an election and adopted this form of government primary driver for that was local representation. Before that, we had five board members, all elected at large. The citizens didn't think that was a very good idea because oddly enough, some parts of town got left out, others got blessed. So we changed the form of government to the board of mayor and aldermen. Matter of fact, I was privileged to serve on that very first board of mayor and aldermen. Well, since that time, we have essentially doubled in population and that really makes local representation more of an issue, perhaps more difficult. Along with doubling the population, our current organization has led us to the point of having arguably the best fire and police departments in the state, particularly in cities our size. Our parks are simply top notch. Public works has kept up with our ridiculously fast growth rate, pretty dead gum admirably. Yeah, they have issues, but Try to keep up with that level of growth. Our property values have simply skyrocketed. All that's been accomplished by this organization while maintaining a tax rate that's among the lowest in the state. So why change the number of aldermen? It works. Only argument I've heard is to make BOMA meetings go faster and smoother. Suggestion was made that having a city administrator means less work for aldermen, therefore fewer are needed. Well, fact is, city administrator has absolutely nothing whatever to do with deciding what issues are going to be put into effect. The city administrator's job is to handle carrying out those issues in the most efficient way possible. Setting law and policy is purely the responsibility of BOMA. Representative government is all about giving people a voice in how our city operates. What issues to discuss? Looking at every issue from all sides. With around 10,000 constituents in every ward, two aldermen actually seems barely sufficient to enable constituent opinions and needs to be fairly heard. Does that sometimes lead to lengthy and spirited discussions? Sure it does. There are always multiple ways to look at any issue, 
Balancing ward needs with overall city needs is never an easy task. Have those discussions occasionally taken a personal turn? Yeah, they have, as opposed to dealing straight with the issue itself. But as demonstrated in the last election, voters tend to take care of those kind of issues. As was pointed out in the last general committee meeting, cutting the number of aldermen in half would mean it only takes four votes to pass anything as opposed to the seven it takes now. How that is an improvement honestly escapes me. It really seems to work exactly against the whole concept of representative government. For one thing, we continually see social media comments regarding special interests influencing BOMA votes. Now, whether you buy any of that or not, it's kind of irrelevant. A lot of people think there are. But if that is ever to become a problem, it would be far easier for special interests to sway four votes instead of seven. Folks, we got here this way. It works. And to use an old guy's rule, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. By any measure, our system of local representation is, in fact, not broke. John, thank you. <laughs> Next, we have Dave Moomy, Cherry Grove Drive. Well, good evening. Dave Moomy, 971 Cherry Grove Drive in Hendersonville. And I just want to say a couple brief remarks in support of the rezoning for the Grace Place facility on New Shackle Island Road. Grace Place does wonderful things, but they're limited by the uh, amount of room and space that families that they can handle. And by being able to move into this new and larger space, they will be able to handle many more families and make many more productive citizens uh, reside in our a great city of Hendersonville. So please support the rezoning uh, option for you tonight to have Grace Place uh, take in the facility at, at 126 New Shackle Island Road. Thank you. David, thank you. Next we have Stephen Puckett, Sanders Ferry Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Stephen Puckett, 228 Sanders Ferry Road. Um, um, here, I'm here in citizens' comments. Uh, first, to speak on the uh, the uh, referendum that you're getting ready to vote on and consider, uh, in which thankfully I think we're heading up to. We, if we need the time, have one more meeting before the August election, which would be the limit uh, for the for us. Um, I do favor the idea that Alderman Petrelli put forward, which would be to um, allow for the citizens to choose between the two and three. Um, it's my understanding, as I spoke with the, the members of the legislature as this was going through, was that they were going to give us maximum flexibility with this and that it would be a formatting aspect where the first format design would be what um, uh, John Bradley mentioned, which would be the three straight questions, yes, three, yes, two, and then no. Um, you would just have to specify that the on the first question of yes or no, it would be the that the yeses would be counted together so that you don't have a plurality issue. The other format would be uh, to have two separate questions, one yes or no, and then the other one would be if yes is approved, similar to how the amendments are set up, then it would, you would choose two or three. That would be only two options. And it would, the language would be that you are establishing term limits upon the vote of the people, as I understand it. But I'm, Mr. Bradley's had time to discuss it with the state, so he should be able to have the final authority from them. Um, the other issue that was mentioned last time was um, something about trying to make it apply to that election or apply this year. I actually, that come, the prohibition on that comes from the state constitution, um, not, just the re, not just the legislation. And I got to actually witness live in the General Assembly exactly why that's in the state, that prohibition's in the state constitution, the grandfathering uh, requirement. Because we, um, in the Civil Justice Committee, I got to watch legislators try to change the qualifications of a judicial race 
in the middle of early voting for the judicial race and would have impacted a candidate that was in that race and it was due and it was being carried on um, for malicious purposes. This is what I'll leave it at, uh, related to a 2007 scandal between a state legislator and that candidate. Um, the second thing that uh, I'm speaking on tonight is the number of board members. <sighs> you know, we've had a lot of change, uh, and especially for the Saunders Ferry community with the uh, rezoning. To make this change would be a step too far. Um, if this were to pass, there most likely a petition for de-annexation would be would begin circulating. Um, give some folks some time to calm down and think about it, um, because folks are angry, and um, and I mean, if Nashville and Memphis decided to seek statehood, that'd be a very tempting thing to jump to. So, because of the just way people have been treated. Um, and then, uh, and the last thing is I do want to say I appreciate uh, Alderman Skidmore and Alderman Collins uh, taking time to work out the uh, issue um, because I, I want to make sure it's clearly understood that if a position on a board sits open for over a year, it gives off a perception that there might be a pocket veto underway. I don't think that was the case, but that can give the impression. And it would actually be helpful uh, as to, as Alderman Hayes pointed out to you as Alderman, for the city to place any vacancies on boards on the city website. Stephen, 30 seconds. All right. And do a monthly post on the um, uh, social media related to um, those issues. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Next, we have Sarah Slattery on Shorecrest Circle. Good evening. My name is Sarah Slattery. I live at 125 Shorecrest Circle on Walton Ferry Peninsula. First of all, thank you, Mayor, for allowing me this opportunity to speak this evening. My daughter, Wendy, and I have lived here five years, and in five years, we've watched constant, constant, controversy. We came when the mayor's salary was reduced to a, a shameful amount. We watched the hassle with the city administrator. We watched when rezoning started. You couldn't even appoint a committee without controversy. There were those who said that the committee was not capable of doing that, that they didn't know what they were doing. Well, I assure you, every member of that group are highly educated, advanced education. We lived through that. We got the committee. They came up with a proposal and brought it to you as aldermen. I thought we had put that to bed, but I learned that we have not. It's disturbing to me to live in a community that is growing. 60,000 people live here now and more coming. I would suggest we need to stop telling people how nice it is to live here <laughs> because the roads are too crowded. But there are 60,000 people here. Six aldermen cannot possibly take care of the wants and needs of their area, 10,000 people, if you will. If everybody contacts their alderman like I do Mark Skidmore, <laughs> they would never sleep, never eat. That would be all they would do. That would be their entire life. So that is ludicrous, ludicrous to consider such a thing because remember, if we leave what we have now, we cannot go back. We are there at that point. And for us to have backroom politics, we're above that. We're better than that. You're above that. You were elected to represent us, not yourselves. 
You represent us, and our voices need to be heard. Don't do it on social media. Do it on one-to-one. -one. I love the fact that Mark and um, Ms. Collins are working on their issue. So I encourage you to, to do just that. We're all working for the good of Hendersonville, I hope. And I'd like to take just a little bit of personal privilege right now. A very fine man, Mr. Homer Bradley, passed away in the wee hours this morning. He was the epitome of civility. And I encourage each and every one of you to pattern your positions like Mr. Bradley did his life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> sir, thank you. Next, we have Kay Brooks, Trousdale Drive. Can I just amen, Miss Slattery? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I'm here to encourage you all to vote for term limits at three terms and to retain 12 aldermen. This body voted unanimously to have the state legislature pass a bill to allow Hendersonville citizens to vote on term limits. Unanimously. You voted unanimously for three terms just a month ago. To suddenly be considering only two terms and then throw in the left turn out of the blue fruit basket upset of only six aldermen seems very bait and switchy to me. Don't do it. Stay the course, do what you said you'd do, three terms to be voted on in November. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next we have Jess Sassy of Villa Way. Put the raises back up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Jeff Sassy at 106 Villa Way. Thank you very much for having me. I'm here to speak against the ordinance 2022-16 to reduce the number of aldermen from 12 to 6 and ask that you vote this ordinance down. The citizens of Hendersonville deserve representation. The population of Hendersonville grew from 51,372 to 61,756 in just 10 years, an increase of over 10,000 or 20 percent. Since the charter was established, the people have had two representatives per ward on the board. Why would we decrease with a larger population? The need for aldermen who listen to their citizens has never been higher. By reducing the number of aldermen, we limit access of the aldermen by the citizens. This is not a full-time position. This is more of a volunteer role designed for the citizens to have a voice on the board. If you reduce the citizens' access to the aldermen in their ward, you reduce the possibility of an alderman viewing, researching, and responding to their citizens. Most aldermen juggle work, family, and life along with the duties of an alderman. Reducing the number of aldermen would make it nearly impossible to represent effectively and respond to citizens, which would leave citizens in the dark and feeling like they have no representation. Aldermen have many responsibilities, as you know. And I wrote a bunch down, but I'm not going to read that because you know it. Um, a statement has been made that in order to have a small government in our city, we must reduce the number of aldermen. But smaller government does not mean smaller numbers of representation. Smaller government means the government stays out of the lives of businesses and citizens, not less people representing them. If anything, it should mean more representation because aldermen, because, because an alderman is not designed to be a political office, but a representative of the people. If anything, I suggest we put this to the people in 2024. Let the people vote on this and phase the change in over the next four years after that. You are giving the citizens the ability to vote on term limits. Why not this fundamental change in our governmental structure as well? It is, I believe it is irresponsible to make this change without the citizens choosing it for themselves since it impacts them so greatly. The citizens need representation. The citizens need access to their aldermen. And I, myself, a citizen of Hendersonville in Ward 3, strongly urge you to vote no on this ordinance. Thank you. And Jeff, thank you. Next we have, Dee, we have, next we have Dinej Van Cleef. Okay. Nobody's going to be upset about that. Amy Kesmerick, Wingcrest Way.
Good evening, uh, Amy Kazmarek, 110 Wincrest Way. I only moved to Hendersonville uh, three weeks ago from Gallatin. And uh, before that, I'm actually from Illinois. You could probably tell by my accent. So um, since I've been here for four and a half years, this area has exploded in population. A lot of new plates. Uh, most are people um, mass exodus from Illinois and other, other states. And um, so I was very surprised to hear that you want to decrease the number of aldermen from 12 to 6. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. I could see if Hendersonville, uh, if the population was decreasing. And I could see if Hendersonville, the, that there weren't m more businesses coming in or new developments or uh, townhomes being built. But that's not the case. And um, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense because as aldermen, you represent us. Now, if there's only six of you, you won't be able to represent the people adequately. Um, and I just think that you should vote no on that, and it should stay at 12 instead of going down to six. And thank you. Amy, thank you. Next, we have Betsy McMullen <laughs> of Pin Oak Drive. I did. You're not used to me calling you Betsy. It's usually Mrs. Hello, I'm Betsy McMullen, 105 Pin Oak Drive in Hendersonville. I'm not sure which ward. I'm right on the border. I can't figure it out. Um, I will, though. I'm one or two. Um, I just want to really reiterate what John Prentice said. The um, term limits for aldermen really can't change. If you have six aldermen trying to handle the business that you guys handle, you know how much the committee meetings, the work you do up here, how entangled it can get. Can you imagine if there were only six of you trying to handle that load? It's getting more and more deep as the years go by and the population increases. Um, it's, there wouldn't be enough time, just not enough time in your lives or in the city's life to get things done. Um, the mayor definitely needs three terms as far as term limits are concerned, and I think you all do too. The projects that need to get done, they're talked about in committee for a while, and then they're decided upon in committee for a while, and then it takes a while to get them developed and worked, and public works takes forever. and it just takes time. Limiting term limits to two years won't do it. I'm, I'm, I was a little edgy on that because I thought two years was, could be enough of some people, but I think you need three years to work it out. Um, as far as the number of aldermen, six is out of sight. It's just too few, too few. You can't handle it. You know you can't handle it. And the people will not feel representative, <laughs> represented. Some people will either feel like you're not hearing them at all or that you're on their side, not on their side. It's going to be polarizing to have one person representing several different points of view. You're going to have to have at least two people that can Give two sides to it. Anyway, John Prentice has the right idea. <laughs> Ms. McMullen, thank you. Next, we have Jamie Abbott on Bluegrass Drive. Good evening. Uh, Jamie Abbott, 274 Bluegrass Drive. I am here in support of the rezoning for the new location for Grace Place. I would ask that you all support that for obvious reasons of encouraging independence and encouraging great leadership amongst people having a hardship right now, mothers and children. I've said this before, I will say this again. It has been a great privilege of mine to raise my children here. I would love for children to move from, 
from here and also say it is a great privilege to grow up here. I'm asking you for your support on the ordinance of 2022-22. Jamie, thank you. Next we have Phil Steen, Buckhaven Court. Hello. I'm Phil Steen, 112 Buckhaven Court. Uh, it's all kind of been said, you know, it's, I think everybody gets the point, right? Um, one thing that I thought of when we were talking about this is that, you know, there's the representation aspect of it. Um, we want to have accessibility to our aldermen to be able to talk to them, to really not overwhelm them, right, but feel like they were being heard. Um, you know, I think another great point that was brought up was the quantity and being able to kind of push things through. I know that may be the intention, but I think that having that discussion um, and that conflict is helpful for us to make the best decisions. Um, it can keep us safe from, you know, external forces trying to impact decisions because there's more people that have to be kind of impacted. Um, so, you know, it, I don't really have much else to say other than it, it, it upset me when I heard it because, you know, there are people that are actively trying to get involved in government and this is a disincentivizer for that because all of a sudden we're selling people well. Sorry, you already started, you know, you, too bad. You, you know, it, it's really upsetting when we want to be involved, right? Um, but, yeah, I, I think everybody's been pretty on point, so I don't want to waste too much time, but appreciate your time. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. So on our agenda, we moved the two consent items down to the end of the ordinance and resolution section. So the next item we have is first reading of ordinance 2022-12. This is an ordinance rezoning 4.47 acres located at 126 New Shackle Island Road on the east side of New Shackle Island Road and on the north side of Innovation Way and approving the Grace Place at New Shackle at New Shackle Comprehensive Development Plan to govern the development of the property. Alderman Robertson. We have a motion from Alderman Robertson, a second from Alderman Petrelli. Alderman Robertson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I have some comments that I would like to make tonight. First, I want to thank the Planning Commission for its diligent and comprehensive deliberation and unanimous conditioned approval of this request. Uh, let me first summarize briefly for the record a few issues that were resolved by the Planning Commission and agreed upon by Grace Place. First, first of all, this request is not to build apartments, but to establish a ministry campus exclusively for needy mothers and their children. No males will be housed at the campus. Number two, according to staff analysis, this ministry center will not overload traffic on New Shackle Island Road. In summary, the rezoning is expected to, to in fact, uh, face uh, decreased impacts when compared to the current zoning and has minimal or negligible impact. A traffic study will be required as part of the site plan submittal. And at that point, if there are traffic concerns, they will be addressed jointly by by Grace Place and the city. Third, and important, Grace Place offered to commit to purchase the property if the rezoning is agreed, and they uh, also will agree to, uh, to obtain all the necessary building permits for its ministry center. Next, uh, Grace Place has offered to remove certain uses of the land allowed by the rezoning, making sure that other less favorable uses are not allowed under the present request. This exclusivity of use is an important safeguard. Uh, and last, while true, the city will lose the potential property tax revenue from this property. If owned by Grace Place, I would think that the investment in human terms and its return is worth the loss of property tax. Ms. Van Cleve, if, if you would come to the, if it's okay. Without uh, objection, we're going to suspend the rules to hear from the executive director for uh, Grace Place. 
and her attorney if need be. Without objection, we'll also hear from our attorney and anybody else representing Grace Place. Just uh, make sure when you come up to the microphone, you introduce yourself and what your position is. My name is Danae Van Cleve, and I'm the executive director of Grace Place Ministry. And I'm here for just any questions that you might have. Thank you, Ms. Van Cleef. You've heard what I've said on these five points. I shared them with you before this meeting so you would, and your attorney would have time to review them. Is what I've said accurate and true? Yes, sir. Okay. That's, that's all at this time. Uh, with all of my concerns addressed, I have determined to follow the dictates of my heart in arriving at a decision. Grace Place is in Ward 6, so both Mr. Waters and I have special attention for this rezoning request. I have attended several Grace Place fundraising events, and I have heard how its program has changed the lives of women in need. I was moved. Your program is not only successful, but more important, it is significant. But for me, I can't help but think of my late grandmother at this time. My late grandmother struggled financially to support who, her two young girls after my grandfather's accidental death at a young age. One of her daughters was my mother, my late mother. Financially strapped, my grandmother moved from place to place, taking menial jobs <coughs> to support her children and basically working herself into an early grave. Tragically lacking good health care, she died two years later leaving my mother at age eight and her younger sister orphans. My mother carried the emotional scars of losing her parents and moving from place to place as a small child throughout her entire life. If only there was a grace place then for my grandmother. Perhaps my family's history could have been different. It's been said that great doors are opened with small hinges. I believe the rezoning decision that we make tonight will open doors of opportunity to countless Sumner County mothers and their children and likely, and likely have eternal consequences. I wish such a ministry center had existed for my late grandmother. But we can tonight ensure for future Sumner County women in need will have a safe place to grow, blossom, and become protective productive citizens. Hendersonville's commercial center is on Indian Lake Road. The government center is on Maple, Maple Street. The recreational center is at Drake's Creek Park. But with this approval of this ordinance tonight and the building of Grace Place, the heart of our city, I believe, will be Grace Place Ministries on New Shackle Island Road. With enthusiasm, I support the uh, findings of fact by the Planning Commission and their unanimous approval and urge my fellow colleagues to vote in the affirmative on this rezoning. Thank you. Alderman Robertson, thank you. Alderman Waters. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. My cohort here stole most of my thunder, but um, let me add just a few points, if, if I may. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yes, this is in Ward 6, um, and we did meet with the, uh, the owners. We had a great meeting with them several months ago. Uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to find out what is Grace Place, what is that? I came away from that meeting thinking this development is not just about a building. It's not. Grace Place is different in many ways. It's about helping and restoring respect to those that need our help. It's that simple. <clears throat> Here's my quote. It's an organization for homeless women and their children. They are supported and helped by Grace Place to get an education, a grade, and so forth, so that they can become independent and contribute tax members to this community. And many have gone on to buy homes in this community. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a win-win situation, not only for the developers, the owners, not only for the city, but for these ladies who need our help. I agree with my colleague here. I encourage this board to vote in the affirmative. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Waters, thank you. Alderman Hayes. No, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the Grace Place Ministries is just a wonderful thing, and it's a miracle what, what you all are doing, and I'm very, very appreciative. At the Planning Commission, it was a unanimous vote. This room was full of supporters, and many of them spoke, but many of them just stood and raised their hand in support. And so I just wanted to ask any of this board that would like to have their name on this ordinance, I would like to invite you to put your name on this ordinance. I'm hopeful very much that we can have a unanimous vote tonight for Grace Place Ministries. Thank you. Alderman Hayes, thank you. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Well, Alderman Hayes, you stole my thunder. Okay. Um, I was going to do the same and encourage anybody who supports this project to please add your name. So please put me down as a sponsor. Grace Place is nothing short of a jewel in our community. Um, what you do, what your organization does, what your board members do is amazing. Um, I'm so excited about this project. I can't tell you. Um, I will be supporting this, and please put me down as a sponsor. Alderman Petrelli, thank you. Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, ditto for me as well as the sponsor. I had a nice meeting with G uh, several, about a month or two ago, I guess it was. And um, I'm just touched. I'm proud that, first of all, I'm proud how our city developed an ADA board. I mean, we care about people that are vulnerable in our community. And we did that about uh, two years ago. So that touched, touched me very much. And I look at this as um, another proud moment in, our, in the history of our city, that we're uh, taking this ministry that is needed. It's, it's almost like the women and children are kind of the ones that are falling through the cracks that need that helping hand. And we're able to provide that through your ministry. So, uh, and uh, we will be judged on how we care for our most vulnerable citizens whether they're uh, handicapped, whether they're handicapped with maybe uh, getting jobs or getting housing, uh, taking care of their children. But uh, this is, again, a proud moment in our, in our city. So thank you, Mayor, and I encourage this whole board to vote for this in support. Thank you. Alderman Cunningham, thank you. D, who are your board members that are here? Can you all stand? Okay. Okay, appreciate that. Um, so I need you all to come up to the microphone for me, please, the board members. I know. <laughs> um, I'm going to read something. I'm probably going to speak longer than on any subject than I ever have. Uh, I appreciate very much what, what Grace Place Ministry does. I'm a Grace Place contributor, and I voted to provide city funds for the ministry. D, her staff, and her board serve a need in Hendersonville and work to provide real solutions for us. Some organizations benefit from the continuation of problems. Grace Place Ministry is different. They work to eliminate problems and turn lives around. Grace Place Ministry is changing young lives and fragile lives every day. When I first spoke with D about this rezoning, I told her that I love the mission of the ministry and I want to serve more women and children. I love that Grace Place Ministry has an opportunity to grow in Hendersonville and serve more Hendersonville residents. I also to told her my concerns about the rezoning request. By state law, zoning applies to property. It's not the property owner. We are being asked to rezone a piece of property. This is not an application that is specific to Grace Place Ministry. It is specific to that piece of property. I appreciate that Dee and the board members have explained how their ministry will grow via the rezoning, but the ministry is not the same thing as the property. The information about the owner's plans really is not a consideration here. As much as I love Grace Place Ministry, the question in front of me is about the property. Should this property be rezoned to multifamily residential? Every multifamily rezoning request that has come to us during the past five and a half years, I have voted against. I'm very proud to say that. When we rezone to allow more houses, we increase the city's population. When we increase the city's population, we negatively impact our infrastructure. This request will bring more people to Hendersonville. I realize that many of the families who are being served now by Grace Place are in Hendersonville already, 
By providing them a new place to live, we are freeing up their current homes. That increases our population. I also have opposed every new subdivision request since being elected. Those were high density and medium density. We just don't have the infrastructure to add more people right now. I was elected on a platform to improve infrastructure. Adding more people to Hendersonville only worsens our infrastructure deficit. Being reelected on that platform tells me that people agree with the need to improve our infrastructure ahead of growth. Residents want improved infrastructure, not more people. The problem with focusing on the property owners of rezoning applications is that the property gets sold. New property owners come in. Some of the promises from the rezoning process remain. Some are ignored. That is why the city places as many promises as possible within the notes of the rezoning. However, some promises are not legally enforceable, so those promises cannot be included in the notes. Those promises forever will be verbal promises and nothing else. Some of the properties to be, t to be put on the market after they were rezoned include the Jackson Townhomes, a section of Falcon Ridge, a section of Fountain Brook, and the streets of Indian Lake. And different owners have different objectives. In these examples, the person who asked for the rezoning sold the property or listed the property very soon after the property rezoned. Simple promises became worthless. If the promise was legally allowed to be included in the rezoning documents, they were. But many of those promises, not legally eligible to be included, just disappeared. That is the situation we are in here. We have no binding way to make sure this property is used for exactly what they're telling it is going to be used for. We have tried. I've worked hard with board members of Grace Place to guarantee that this property, once rezoned, will be used specifically and exactly how we are told it will be used. I was looking for some assurances that what happened in those other situations I just mentioned would not happen in this situation. I offered several ideas to allow me to support this rezoning application while guaranteeing that what happened in those other situations would not happen with this property. I've discussed with Dean and her board members, the city possibly owning a part of the land, the city owning all the land and leasing it back to Grace Place, a church owning the land and leasing it to Grace Place, the city having first right of refusal if the land is ever sold, the city having a contract to buy the land at its current price, written guarantees not to sell, and a deed restriction. I discuss those ideas because I want Grace Place to grow and to serve more women and children. But all of these ideas fell apart because of restrictions from state law or the requirements for financing on the construction of the property. Simply, lenders want collateral. That puts us back to the possibility that this property could end up in somebody else's hands and be used for something else. That puts me and the alderman in a very difficult situation. We love Grace Place Ministry, but we are re not rezoning a landowner, we are rezoning land. If somebody else ends up with this land, what happened in the examples I just mentioned could unfortunately happen to this property. If somebody else becomes the owner of this property, they do not have to come back to the board. If somebody else becomes the owner of the property, they have a very valuable piece of property with a very rare rezoning designation. They can move forward without any input from the city, allowing them to build an apartment complex. Their apartment complex would not have to be attached to a ministry or any concern that is dear to Hendersonville. If somebody else becomes owner of this property, I will have done what I promised to not do. The planning commissioners understood this. They made it very clear that the rezoning is applied to the land, not to the owner. They asked some very important questions to help connect the use to the owner. I appreciate very much the answers that Dee gave a couple weeks ago to the planning commissioners. Most importantly, Dee agreed to give up some of the possible uses for the land. Those additional restrictions will be part of the zoning and included in the notes. Nevertheless, I'm still facing this challenge to the promise I have made. I need to know that this property will not become apartments. To do that, I have to extend a great deal of trust that you will follow through with your plan for this land. If you choose to sell this property for whatever reason, please know that you will have done damage to your relationship to this board going forward. Many of us up here pledged to oppose high density housing. It may have been the main reason that we were elected and reelected. The voters trust us to keep that promise. If your board members change course and sell this land, your relationship with us and many Henderson Villians will be damaged. We will know who opened the door to more high density living in our city. The blame will not be on this board because, again, we were acting in good faith to your request. Also, if your board changes course, it will damage other nonprofits who might present similar projects. We would have no other choice but to deny their projects simply because of the risk of more apartments. Please understand the position that you put us in. We cannot use deed restrictions, contracts to purchase, leases, or rights of first refusal. All we really have is your word, and I want your word. If your board members can stand in front of us here and tell us that they will not sell this land, they will indeed use it for the exceptional ministry you have my support. Board members, 
as long as you're board members, will you vote to not sell this land? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There is no ill intention. Okay. No. There your, is no intention to sell this land. Your commitment here will be followed closely, not just by me, but by the people who heard my promise to vote against high density residential. I look forward to Grace Place continuing its ministry and growing its ministry by caring for single mothers and their children. I want, to I, want to graduate I want you to graduate hundreds of struggling women. I'm excited about Grace Place's expansion and what it means for some of our most vulnerable citizens. You have my vote. Thank we you, have nobody Mayor. else wishing to speak. All those in favor of first reading of Ordinance 2022-12, please, pre please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passed unanimously. Thank you all. Next, we have second and final reading of Ordinance 2022-11. This is an ordinance of the City of Hendersonville, Tennessee, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022 and ending June 30, 2023. I so move. Second. I have a second from Alderman Petrelli. Alderman Robertson. Yes, I have, uh, I have an amendment that I want to propose. If uh, the alderman would turn to page 81 under tab 4. I have, as, as many of you have, scoured this budget to try to find any ways that we could become more efficient and leaner. And I think I have found such a line item. Uh, on page, I'm sorry, on page 81. Did I say 81? You said 81, yep. Under pickleball construction. Uh, we, we have budgeted $690,000 to build pickleball courts. I'm in favor of pickleball courts because uh, a number in our community want those facilities. Uh, in looking at the numbers behind that number, it, it says that, uh, that included in that number is the construction of 80 parking spots. I think that is too many. Uh, I think that we should cut that in half to 40, and that will save us almost $100,000. So I'm glad to answer any questions, but what this would do, this will not stop that construction. It will just uh, change the parameters for the staff when they bid it to bid it for 40 parking spots instead of 80 and save, uh, save around $100,000, at least $100,000 to the city. So with that, that's the only change that I make, and I so move to make that. Okay. So, Alderman uh, Robertson, are we changing that 690 to? Uh, yes, to, to, uh, to let's change it to 600000 which would save okay. $90,000. Okay. So we have a motion from Alderman Robertson, a second from Alderman Petrelli. Any discussion on that? Alderman Collins. Um, I'm wondering what the cost would be to add those parking spaces in the future if we find that they're needed and I mean I know we won't know that because inflation on construction is out of control but how did we arrive at the 80 spaces in the first place Jesse is that you or is it Andy from the looks of it Jesse can answer that one I don't want to be I like this but I don't want to be penny wise dollar foolish <laughs> with yeah that's a good question thousands so of dollars we asked a consultant to go ahead and develop a plan for us on the usable space that was over there. So based on the space that was there, they proposed parking and pickleball. We did not define a number of spots. Uh, we had told them that, you know, the parking at times when it's heavy right now is inadequate. So take that into consideration. And they developed a plan that we looked at. And there's some sidewalks on either side, so they basically put the parking as wide as they could put it. And, I mean, there's a lot of room to move it forward and back. Uh, we have the RFQ that's queued up to go out for design for construction plans. And one of the things we're asking in the design plans is for the designer to be cognizant of future growth so that we're going to go ahead and develop it as though it could expand but okay. we don't currently need to do it. So that 80, um, the 80 spots that were on there was based on a concept plan. We don't have construction plans yet. 
Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Collins. Alderman Cunningham. Uh, don't don't leave. <laughs> How many courts are we going to do for this pickleball? Are we going to do eight courts? Um, so we have, um, I think there's, Andy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think there's four courts. Was there four courts? There was four courts, I think. Yeah, there's four courts, and that's the budget that we have. So the concept plan shows eight, right? Mm -hmm. showed, I, I think remember. the last one we got right was eight yes, across. Yes, yes. And then we did some, what we did is we took the per unit cost, and we said, hey, if we were going to do six or eight or four, and we landed at four for okay. the budget number that we have. But that concept plan that we've all seen has at eight, eight courts. Yes, That's and right. so we have That's enough right. capacity to increase another four next in next budget year if we need to. And will uh, 40 spaces be adequate for that? If we expand it to eight, could we also expand the parking spots to 80 at that point? Yeah, so one of the things that we've asked the designer to do is to, to intentionally make a buffer between the pickleball and the parking so that if parking needs to move out, we wouldn't have to take the pickleball courts down. So we would build in a buffer for uh, expansion of parking. So that wouldn't be a problem then for the future? I don't anticipate it to be a problem. We design it so okay. that we could grow. All right, thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment, which is reducing $690,000 from pickleball construction to 600000 please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passes unanimously. Now we're back on the main motion. Do we have a motion already? Um, we already have a motion on the table. That was for myself and from Alderman Petrelli. It doesn't look like anybody else wishes to speak. Sorry about that. All those in favor of the budget as amended, uh, this is uh, first reading of ordinance. I'm sorry. This is second reading of ordinance 2022-11. Please press your green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passes unanimously. Thank you all. Next, we have second and final reading of Ordinance 2022-13. This is an ordinance adopting revisions to the zoning ordinance for the city of Hendersonville. Alderman Peterson. So moved. We have a second. motion from Alderman Peterson, a second from Alderman Petrelli. A couple items that, that uh, in conversations with Keith Free that, uh, uh, that we need to change, as well as some conversations with some residents. Um, and I'm going to make this motion, but I need to have ask you to turn to page 252 first. It's 252 in the in the um, ordinance. I'll give you all a second. That's uh, yes, behind tab five, then 252, and you're going to see down. You're going to see in red a note there. We have a situation where we have somebody working on a house. Um, that needs a little bit more time to go through the first phase of the building of the permit process. Um, and so what I'm going to ask is that this, this section specifically, 10.2.2, become effective August 1st, 2023. 2023. Uh, that will save an awful lot of heartache uh, for, for, uh, for one property owner and probably about thirty to forty thousand dollars. They have started on the process of adding to their house. Um, and this would really screw things up if we implemented this uh, within the next couple weeks. So uh, I'm going to move that on page 252 under section 10.2.2 um, that we make that section itself, just that section, effective August 1st, 2023. Second. We have a second from Alderman Peterson. Any discussion on that? Of 2023, August 1st, 2023. The rest of it, John, will be, be enacted after publication. Okay. So 10 to uh, 14 days, probably. Okay. And, uh, Alderman Cunningham. Um, do we need to put uh, a specific address on that? Uh, not necessarily. So um, uh, it, there, is, there, <laughs> there is literally one situation that we know of. Oh, okay. So there could be a, maybe another. There could be maybe another, but it's, it's very likely that they would be able to get everything done. In time. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Okay. Any other discussion on that one item? All those in favor of this amendment, please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. 
That passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, now I'd like for you all to turn to page 197. So go forward a little bit. 197. And you can see a chart there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an amendment that has four changes in it. And this goes back to the conversation uh, that has sort of sprung from Chival Drive and some, of the, uh, and some of the building that is going on in Old Town Residential, also on Campus Drive um, in, in that area right there. So on this chart you see, you're going to see a column about 80% of the way over on the right that says OTR. That's, o that's Old Town Residential. And I'm going to ask that we make a couple changes there. Uh, the first item I'd like to make a change is where you see seven. Uh, in the first row, I'd like to change that to five. That will mean that fewer houses, uh, fewer, help me, help me, Keith, fewer, fewer units. That, that means that fewer units will be able to be built on, the, on, that, uh, on, a piece, uh, on a piece of property. It will be five per acre instead of seven per acre. Next, I'd like you to go down to the next block there and that the um, minimum lot area has to be two acres instead of 20,000 square feet. The next block that the um, minimum lot width has to be 200 feet instead of 70 feet. And the reason for this is, is we're seeing more often situations where we have pieces of property that we have an allowable use on there by right, and we have a certain number of units can be built on there. But when the lot is so narrow and so small, there's just not much, much flexibility there. It causes a situation where everything that they are allowed to put on there is all they can put on there and not much else. So what we'd like to, what we'd like to do is, is uh, make sure that there are larger lots there, create some greater flexibility, but at the same time, make sure that we don't go all the way to, that we don't change it all to seven units per acre, but down to five units per acre. Um, so I'm gonna make that motion. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, there's one other thing. There's one other thing. On the notes, we need to scratch out at the very bottom note one that no longer, we no longer have a note one in this chart as of a couple weeks ago. And so we need to scratch out. So there's four changes that I'm proposing. First one is under OTR column, we change that seven to a five. We change the minimum lot area from 20,000 square feet to two acres. And then we change the minimum lot width from 70 feet to 200 feet and we cross out Note number one, since there's nowhere on here that note number one applies. Second. I have a second from Alderman Petrelli. Alderman Brown. Just a question. Um, and I guess this is a planning question because I don't know. How many square feet in an acre? That was pretty good. Go ahead, Alderman Petrelli. <laughs> She's right. I'm sorry. I addressed the wrong person. How many? 43,560. Okay. Um, Thank you. And the, the other question is, how did we decide on going from 70 to 200? Is that just kind of with that, that fits or? Um, in conversation with some of the residents out there and certainly and with conversations uh, with Keith. Um, and Keith, do you want to help us explain why that makes more sense? <clears throat> um, and obviously when we go to a bigger lot, there, we don't, when we go to a bigger lot, go to two acres uh, instead of uh, 20,000 square feet, we don't want it two acres at this width. Uh, by any means, but go ahead, Keith. Yeah, if you if you were if you were looking to change it to two acres, then you would want to adjust uh, the lot width from the current proposed 70 feet uh, to something uh, something larger, because otherwise you would end up with on two acres you would end up with something where it was 70 foot wide and 1800 foot deep or something like that. So, you know that wouldn't that wouldn't really work very well. So if you're if you're looking to increase the the uh, minimum uh, size to two acres, then you definitely need to increase the lot width as well. Okay, thanks. Alderman Brown, anything else? Thank you. Alderman Petrelli, I had your light on. Is that my mistake? Thank you. Uh, Alderman Collins. Um, I need some clarification. Okay. Um, okay, is one acre 43,000 square is. feet? It is. Okay, so we're going from half an acre to two acres. Okay, that's making sense to me. Okay. And so now under the MFR, we have it as um, the maximum density at 15. So why does the note number one not apply anymore? We don't have, um, you see that that's crossed out where the note one was that says the TH MF one, the 2400 one. Uh, everywhere where note one applied is 
has been crossed out as of a couple weeks ago. And I, I can explain. Yeah, go ahead, Keith. Yeah, to be helpful. Yeah, that that top where it's got maximum den density uh, units an acre, that too shouldn't be on top of there either. But uh, that was added so that there was clarity as to how many units an acre uh, were allowed. And all these others, everything is the same as what it is right now, except for OTR, which was seven, but in the mayor's proposal is proposing that to be five. But all those others, uh, that's a new bar across there, just so it's very clear how many units an acre are allowed, but nothing's changing in those other, in those other zones. Okay. I, I understand it now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Collins. Um, Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the, the Old Town Residential, uh, is there much property left there to develop? Yeah, let's have Keith answer this one. Uh, Alderman okay, Petrelli, on. is there much property yet to be developed there? Well, what we're seeing in Ward 1 is that folks are uh, buying up houses and tearing them down because they have the zoning under Old Town. So, oh. for instance, next to Gene Brown, where we had a, you know, a mid-century ranch on two acres, you know, we had 38 units go in there, and folks are outraged. I was not happy about it, but BOMA did not vote on that because the zoning is there. We literally had no say on it because the zoning is mm -hmm. 25 years old, 20 years old, older than, anyway. So this so, is correcting that. Oh, yeah. It's, go okay. it's going to help. It's not going to correct it, mm -hmm. but it's going to help create more buffer mm -hmm. to reduce density when there's a teardown and then units go up because legally we cannot um, not do that yeah. right now, correct? Mm -hmm. It's a fair statement. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that, Alderman Cunningham. Uh, Alderman Dixon, back to you. Yeah, I just had a question for Keith. So anything for OTR once this is published mm -hmm. is there anything in, is, is there any applications in the pipeline that no. this would great yeah Thank there's you. there yeah there's no applications uh that are in the that are in the pipeline mm -hmm. and this this is something where what came from the planning commission for otr does reduce the density this further um amendment would further reduce the density and Keith, just for clarification, we the Planning Commission likely is going to have something come before them in the next month or two months. It will not affect this. These changes will not affect that application. Is that correct? Uh, there are no applications that I'm aware of right now. Well, hold it. We have one on, on Chivel Drive. Uh, that was denied, and I'm not sure what's where that is okay. or what the legal status of that currently gotcha. is. Okay. Okay. But uh, currently, that that has been denied. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that. And okay. maybe Mr. Bradley maybe can speak I, to that. I forgot or, about that part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on this amendment? All those in favor of the four parts of this amendment, um, please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passes unanimously. Now we're back on the main motion. Thank you all. And that is second final reading of Ordinance 2022-13. Keith, let me look at you real quick. Is there, was there anything else we discussed? Do we have a technical item in there that need to be changed, or are we good? I, I think you've corrected that with that item number one. Okay. Uh, I think everything that we're aware of, uh, those corrections have been uh, have been made, just little technical things. Okay. Appreciate your help. Appreciate okay. the Planning Commission helps and all your staff. It's been right. months and months work on this. Yeah. The Planning Commission did a great job in their thorough review of it. The planning staff uh, did a tremendous job uh, over about a year and a half putting all of these things together. and. I think it really, uh, really addresses a lot of things with our, uh, with our documents, uh, and gets them, gets them really up to date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of second and final reading of ordinance 2022-13, please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we're on second and final reading of ordinance 2022-09. This is an ordinance relative to term limits for members of the board of mayor and alderman. Alderman Waters. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Waters, can you make a motion for me, please? I make that motion. Thank okay. you. And a second from Alderman Robertson. Alderman Waters, Alderman Waters go ahead, please. Uh -oh. huh. well, point, of, point of order, sure. Mayor. I haven't 
we already had a, have a motion. That main motion was ah, deferred thank you. Thank you. until this week, okay. uh, until this meeting. So I think there is a main motion on the table. Okay. That was made at the last meeting. John, how do we handle that? Because it was, it was actually deferred. It wasn't tabled. Am I correct? It, it, yes, it was deferred, not okay. tabled. Just to be on the safe side, just make a motion to approve it and okay. second it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I just want to make sure that we're right. Appreciate that. Thank so, you. Alderman Waters, are you making a motion for us? Sir? Are you making a motion for us? I just want to talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that quite yet. I need a motion. I need a second. I'm, I move. I'm, oh, I second that motion. <laughs> so Alderman Robertson, a motion from you. I need a second. Okay. A second from Alderman Petrelli. Alderman Waters, go ahead and talk, please. Okay. <laughs> First, let me say, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry I didn't mention a while ago when I was speaking about how much I personally appreciate this crowd coming out tonight. I tell you, it's amazing. You get the citizens of this town upset. <laughs> They'll come up here and tell us what they want. It shows that you're concerned about, about the city, and I want to say thank you. And I'm sure the board does, too. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, when I look back to the 2019, my good friend Alderman Woodcock, y'all remember him, I know, bought this uh, term limits before the board. It didn't even get enough votes to get off the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so that we could submit it to the Tennessee General Assembly. Now here it is three years later, and some new faces on this board, we, we were able to send the state and receive their approval on first reading. So on May the 24th, this board, first reading, approved the ordinance by the two thirds vote that required. But on June, the 20, <clears throat> on June the 14th, the second reading, something happened. I don't know, but as, as one of the sponsors, I was surprised when members who voted and passed it on the first reading would change their vote on the second reading. I was really surprised. I don't think it was about the wording of two or three terms. I think we got over that because it was finally deferred, like my colleague says, to allow the city attorney to meet and clarify a question with the county election commissioner in Galton, which I hope our attorney has that answer for us tonight. So in closing, <clears throat> I truly hope, I really do, I hope this board will not continue finding ways to amend, to prolong this ordinance. We do need to pass this now in order to get our election commissioners so it can be on this November ballot. So I asked my colleagues, let's pass it tonight. Let's get the two thirds votes and allow our citizens to make the final call because to deny them this opportunity is strictly unacceptable. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Waters. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I stated at the last meeting, you know, the whole point of a referendum is to let the people choose. So we, we got that from the state. And my question was, if we're going to let the people choose, let's let them choose. We've made it this far. Let's let them choose. So, uh, Attorney Bradley, what were you able to find out about putting on the ballot? The state election commission and the county election coordinator both advised against trying to have any, any sort of a multiple question that they said that it was best for this board to decide what term limit they want and then put that out for the referendum for the voters to decide whether it's two terms, three terms, four terms, whatever, that this board needs to make a decision so the voters can vote on a specific recommend, a specific idea, not in the alternative because elections just don't typically work that way. I, I still find that hard to believe when we have ballots with multiple people's names on it. Our people are well informed and educated. I, you know, that makes no sense to me. Um, like I stated at the last meeting, I mean, if we're truly going to be a conservative board in a conservative community, 
two terms is enough. I've served two terms. Um, it's more than enough. It should take you maybe 10 weeks to get your feet wet. We discussed the whole item about years and years of projects. Like I stated at the last meeting, these projects go way beyond three terms. They go multi-decades, half-century projects. That's what we're talking about with the Walton Ferry intersection. Um, again, like a relay, should be able to hand off the baton. Somebody who's going to run for office should be well-versed in the issues. And granted, it's, it's new territory, but it's not rocket science. Two terms is plenty. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Petrelli. Alderman Robertson. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Three short years ago, we had this same conversation. Some of you on this board, I recall, voted against term limits at that time. The measure by state law requires two-thirds of vote by this board. The community was upset and took its wrath out at the next election. A sea change has happened, and those that once opposed term limits now have been converted. In fact, I've not seen such a dramatic conversion since the days of Billy Graham crusades. <laughs> the only question is whether the limit will be two or three terms. I'm not playing a game of chicken on this issue. The, the, uh, this is no game for the stakes are too high. I encourage each of you to not think about the next election, but consider what is best for this city for the next hundred years. Consider the process, not personalities. City government will become more and more complex in the future, and Hendersonville will continue to grow in population. Experience for an alderman will become more and more important. Allowing three terms will permit a better opportunity for this city to benefit from an alderman's experience. Look at the experience of our neighbors with term limits, I beg you. Gallatin voters approved three term limits by approximately 80%. Nashville voters, on the other hand, approved two term limits and have ever since tried to change it to three term limits. I suggest we go the successful way of Gallatin and not the failed way of Nashville Amen. on this matter. Just a little over a year ago, some on this board voted against the hiring of a COO, arguing instead to give all those duties to the mayor. In other words, some voted to not give the mayor any help in managing the staff. I believe you were wrong then, and I believe history has proved that the majority was correct. Now everyone brags on the success of the COO. I predict, just as Nashville has, that if you vote for two terms, it will not stand the test of time and you will live to regret it. I encourage you to be a statesman and vote as you did on the first reading for this measure that has the greatest chance of success for the future governance of our city. I have sought middle ground on this ordinance. When I amended the original <laughs> ordinance, I wanted to give equal terms to both the alderman and the mayor, to three terms, and also simplify the wording so the public could better understand the proposition. If you recall, I passed out copies of my amendment before the meeting started so that you would not be surprised. During the discussion of my motion, I attempted, feebly maybe, to explain the rationale for the change from two terms to three terms. It must have been persuasive because it passed unanimously. Then at the last meeting on the second reading without prior notice, a motion to amend was introduced by Alderman Brown to reduce the term limits to two terms. During the discussion on the amendment, I heard no arguments on the merits of two versus three. No rationale, no case studies, no statistics were presented to justify this abrupt change. 
it was as if the minority wanted the majority on this board to buy a pig in a poke. The amendment was defeated. Uh, all I did hear was that the public demanded two versus three terms. Look at this crowd. Since that meeting, I've polled dozens of my friends and citizens, and all but one believes that three terms is a more reasonable and rational approach. Now, I did hear arguments that since the implementation of this ordinance, if approved by the citizen, would not begin until 2024, that two terms were more appropriate. Implementation, I remind you, is prescribed by statute and beyond my power to change through the form of a motion. Again, I believe some of us are looking short term rather than long term. Nevertheless, if I am fortunate enough to win re-election in 2022, I am willing to stipulate for the record tonight that my term limits will begin with my re-election in, in 2022. And I would urge others on this board to make a, will, a, a similar declaration. Board, the eyes of Hendersonville citizens are on us tonight. The citizens of Hendersonville deserve the right to vote on this matter of governance. Deny them again, and I predict that you will suffer the same fate as others who have opposed term limits. Our obligation is to come up with a workable plan with a reasonable chance of the people approving it and for governmental success. Th Three-term proposition was successful in Gallatin. It will be successful in Hendersonville. So I contend that the ordinance that you unanimously passed, passed on the first reading is the right plan forward, and I urge you to support it tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Robertson, thank you. Alderman Dixon. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have a beautiful speech written, but and I do um, appreciate both the Alderman and Ward 6, your words, great words. All I have to say tonight is I'm a sponsor on this ordinance. I will not vote for any amendment to, on this ordinance if one is proposed because I am a voice for the people and I've heard from tons of you that you want three terms and that is what I'm voting for. Thank you. Alderman Dixon, thank you. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I'll go back to three years ago uh, when Alderman Woodcock oppo or opposed, proposed this. And he stood at that podium the other day and said at that time he was in favor of two, uh, but he certainly would, uh, he would go along with three. And he was the original proposer of the, the ordinance that was voted down at that time. Can you not hear me, Betsy? Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I have not been a proponent of term limits. I think everybody knows that. Uh, I think the, the term limits is either sitting in the audience or sitting at home, and they go to the polls, and they vote yes or they vote no. Uh, I've always felt that way. I still feel that way. Uh, but that's my opinion. And, uh, you know, so uh, I voted for, I voted for, three terms on the first reading simply because I wanted to get a little time to talk to folks and study a bit. Uh, I have in many cases in the years I've been up here changed my vote on second reading from when I voted on first reading. So that's, that's not a, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that some of us do that. I mean, uh, you, you vote something to get it second reading to take time to look at it. Um, I, like Alderman Robertson, have talked to several people before uh, that meeting two weeks ago and have to talk to several since then. I talked to quite a few today. It just took a, a poll off the cuff. Uh, frankly, most of them would like to see term limits in some form. Two terms was plenty with the majority of them, and I never coached that. So, sorry, Jill. That's what I was told. So, no. yeah. Sorry, ahead, you're nodding your head at me, hold so on, I'm going to answer hold on, hold on. you. Yo, we're going to take a break in just a minute, but let's go ahead and. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, uh, you know, I would I would offer this that um, 
two terms works, three terms works, I guess, and no terms works. Uh, in research, uh, some of us up here talk about doing research. I'm going to give you a little bit of research right now. Term limits, Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Knoxville, Tennessee, and Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm going to give you the top 16 cities in the, in the state. Two terms. They have two term limits. Clarksville, Tennessee has three terms. Johnson City, Tennessee, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Franklin, Tennessee, Jackson, Tennessee, Bartlett, Tennessee, Hendersonville, Tennessee, Kingsport, Tennessee, Smyrna, Tennessee, Cleveland, Tennessee, Spring Hill, Tennessee, and Germantown, Tennessee have no term limits. So looking at that, it seems that the majority of the voters in those cities agree with me. The term limits is the voters. It's not two, it's not three. But I've agreed to let it go to the voters, to let them vote. But I want to put the same amendment out I did two weeks ago, that it goes to the voters with two terms, not three terms. So that's my amendment, same as it was. So if that's a motion, I've got to call it out of order because um, there's a couple reasons. One is that the person on the winning side, you're, you're, you're making a motion to reconsider. That needs a person on the winning side, and that only pertains to a motion that was actually adopted. Okay. I agree. Hold on. Uh, are you finished, Alderman Brown? I am, thank you. Okay. Alderman, Alderman Edwards. As to the motion to reconsider, does it also need to be done on the same day or during the same meeting? It does. Is the previous one? Okay. It does. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Edwards. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving on second reading 2020, Ordinance 2022-9, please signify by pressing the green button. Those opposed, please press the red one. Jason, leave that up there for a second, please. So that, plat that passes with eight yes votes, four no's, and one abstention. The abstention is from Alderman Petrelli. No votes are from Alderman Cunningham, Brown, Hayes, and Collins. And again, that passes. Eight, one to four. We need we need nine votes on this in order to place it on the referendum. Would anybody wish to change their vote? We need nine positive votes in order for this to go on the referendum. If any of the people who vote against it or abstained wish to change their vote. We will move on to the next item. Um, I, I would suggest that we take a break, um, and when we come back, I do remind you that when you are speaking, you need to address me. J um, um, I need a motion to take a break uh, for five minutes, but I do want to make an announcement before we go. I, need, I have a motion from Alderman Waters to take a break for five minutes. I need a second, please. A second from Alderman Dixon. Um, if uh, you're in favor of that, please press the green button. If you're opposed, please, please press the red one. Hold on one second. And again, I, I need to make an announcement before, uh, before we, after we turn off the camera, but before we leave. It's unrelated to our meeting. Hold on just a second. Yep, we're getting it set up here. There we go for a five-minute break. We, need, we're, we still need a couple people to vote, please. That passed unanimously. Jason, um, are we still on camera?
So we are now on item number nine that was moved up because we eliminated item number seven and as part of uh, setting the agenda, we uh, decided to put item nine here. And this is resolution 2022-18. This is a resolution to, appro to approve a final development plan for near water place. Alderman Peterson. So moved. A motion from Alderman Peterson. Second. And a second from Alderman Waters. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving resolution 2022-18, please signify by pressing your green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passes 13 to zero, thank you. Now we're on first reading ordinance 2022-16. This is an ordinance reducing the number of aldermen from 12 to six over the next two years. Alderman Brown. So we have a motion from Alderman Brown. Second. A second from Alderman Hayes. Um, Alderman Brown, go ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I've written notes, but I may not stay on them, and I think most of you know that I usually don't, so I can't even get them apart. A lot of people said this is a surprise, there's no transparency, you know, so on and so forth. I, I've read all that, and I've heard it from some folks, so I want to clarify some things for you. Uh, we came through redistricting a while ago, uh, a few months back. And during that period of time, it was mentioned about, do we have too many aldermen? Wasn't talked about greatly, but it was. It has been talked about occasionally over the years. So uh, by doing that redistricting, we created a little bit of a quandary for ourselves. And coming this November, we will have 13 aldermen and one mayor. That's 14 votes. Um, so that being said, that, that could be difficult at best, but it is, is a quandary. So I'll tell you the reason I proposed the change, and I talked to Mr. Bradley about it and talked to some other folks, not on this board, um, about moving from 12 to 6, cutting it in half, talked to some county commissioners who just changed the way they do things. Uh, some of that was good, some of that conversation was bad, I'll tell you. you know, uh, so, but here's the reason I proposed it, and I'm just gonna read this, and I mean no offense to anyone up here, but uh, I proposed it for several reasons, none of which I'm willing to die on a hill for. You know, it's just a proposal. It's not that we vote no in it, I'm gonna go home and go to sleep. We vote yes on it, I'm gonna go home and go to sleep. I didn't sleep good last night, so tonight will probably, either way, I'll sleep. Um, it makes, it makes no real big difference to me. I'm just trying to offer a solution and, and some types of a problem. Uh, that being said, I will tell you that accusations are easily made on social media and emails uh, that I propose this change to benefit me or others. Doesn't benefit me at all. I'm proposing this for what I think along with some other constituents uh, might be the best for the city of Hendersonville and the operation thereof, the city. Redistricting created a scenario that leaves us with 13 aldermen beginning in November of 2022. Our charter provides for 12. No other alderman or chairman of this board has offered any resolution to that problem, if you consider it a problem. But others have signed on as a sponsor since this was proposed in general committee meeting. I've been accused of not following procedure. That's not true. I or any other sitting alderman does not have to discuss any ordinance or resolution with the agenda that goes on the agenda with the chairman of this board. By adding this to the agenda two weeks ago is not a procedural breach, but allowed if the majority votes for it, which the majority did. After being passed by the majority, it was moved to Boma in two weeks. That's tonight. That is the way the procedure works. So, you know, it, it was questioned that I research. Have you done any research? Yeah, I've done some research. Uh, there's been over the years some discussion, I said that, about reducing aldermen and, and latest redistricting discussions. Redistricting moved a lot of constituents out of the ward they had been accustomed to, including some aldermen. It also created a problem about uh, with 13 seats. So. I believe that uh, if there ever was a time to reduce the number of aldermen, now would be the time to consider it. 
since we've already did redistricting. This proposal will reduce the number of aldermen to nine this election cycle and six by the 2024 election cycle. State law now only allows for the maximum of eight automatic seats in a municipality. Back in 1986, Mr. Prentice is still back there, I think, it allowed for more, but now it allows, allows for up, eight, uh, up to eight. Most cities have realized less is more. Um, I read you some statistics a while ago, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to read you some more. This is research, so they say. I'm going to give you the municipality, the population, and the number of aldermen or councilmen they have. Knoxville, Tennessee is 190,000 residents, has nine aldermen. Chattanooga has 181,000, they have nine. Murfreesboro, Tennessee is 136,000, they have six. Clarksville, Tennessee is 132,000, which would be double what we are, and they have 12. Franklin, Tennessee is 84,000 with eight. Johnson City is 72,000 with four. Jackson, Tennessee is 68,000, they have, they have nine. Hendersonville, Tennessee is 62,000, and we have 12. Kingsport, Tennessee is 55,000 people, and they have six. Collierville, Tennessee is 50,000 people. They have six. Gallatin, Tennessee is 45,000 people, and they have seven. Columbia, Tennessee is 42,000 people, and they have six. Lebanon, Tennessee is 40,000 people, and they have six. Germantown is 38,000 people, and they have six. Brentwood is 38,000 people, they have six. And Mount Juliet has 33,000 people, and they have four. So when I, when I say some cities have seen that less is more, I think statistics might prove that if you're a statistic person. It was told, I was told that I didn't do statistics. So in some cases, the mayors are appointed by the governing council. In some cases, the mayor does not vote but proposes legislation. So those are the numbers from the cities. The COO, we talked about COO a while ago. I can, I can talk about COO or CA or whoever or giving the mayor some help, but I'll say the COO is taking a greater role in administering daily operations is one reason that, that uh, we, we could go down to less alderman. I hear out of many, many of you out there that I, but I know less government, less government. This proposal gives you less government. This proposal also saves the ta also saves the taxpayers fifty thousand dollars a year. Less committee meetings, more efficient Boma meetings. Oh, by the way, I called some of these people in other cities to talk to them too. You're welcome to do that. Alderman Brown, you need to uh, address me, please. Sir, you need to address me. Again, I'm not going to die on a hill over this. Again, I'm I'm about done. I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna die over a hill on it. It's just a proposal. I haven't heard anything better uh, since we redistrict. So uh, there it is. I would just urge you all to consider it. That's all I've got to say, Mayor. Alderman Brown, thank you. Um, I kept my light on there because I wanted to speak on this item. Um, there's been talk about that we have to do something. We're going to end up with 13 aldermen. So I emailed our uh, election commission um, director and uh, asked, if the city does nothing, will you be holding an election uh, in, in November for the city of Hendersonville, and will it be for six aldermen? And she wrote, correct. With no further input from the city of Hendersonville directing us otherwise, by July 11, 2022, the city election will be held per your charter with six aldermen, one from each ward being elected on the November 8, 2022 ballot. This idea that we have a problem coming because we're going to end up with 13 aldermen is not true. Ask the person who puts together the ballot. She has already advertised what the ballot's going to be and what races are up for, uh, are up for election. It will be elections in six of, of, of six, all six of our wards, and it will still stay with what we have done since 1986 
we'll have 12 aldermen. If anybody can get a comment from the voter uh, election director, uh, the otherwise, let me know. Otherwise, I think this is the law. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. Um, since this ordinance has come to light, I have gotten feedback from uh, several of my constituents. Some of you all spoke tonight. Um, you know, when we went through the redistricting, there were discussions about reducing aldermen. And what is strange to me is that some of the people, some of the folks that reached out that were in favor of that now are, are not. Um, so I, I find that ironic. But at this point, I'm going to withdraw as a sponsor because um, I, I don't want to do anything that constituents would feel they have less representation. Um, if it were to come back in the future, maybe give it more study, you know, the COO, CA position was, has been cited several times tonight, but, you know, that took several years to kind of fine tune that. And something like this, I think maybe, um, especially with the redistricting, could be um, put into a workshop or a further discussion. I respect everybody, um, all the sponsors on this, so it, it, you know, it, it's not personal. Um, but at this point, I'd rather take the more conservative route and keep the 12 that we have so that nobody feels that they are being underrepresented. Thank you, Mayor. Without objection, we'll remove Alderman Petrelli's name as a sponsor. Alderman Waters. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> well, I have to disagree wholeheartedly with the sponsor from his comments he just made. <clears throat> I've already seen two areas he, he mentioned, but I'll leave that out. Um, I look back over the over the years during my three terms, twelve years, uh, and we knew we knew the outcome on this board when we voted. We knew it's going to be seven to six, seven to six, seven to six. We knew that. That's just the way the board was made up. And I'm not complaining. That's just the facts. So our citizens, they saw it just like they see it tonight. They made a big change in the last election. <clears throat> I say this because I'm getting the same calls. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of calls he's getting, but I'm getting the same calls and emails from Ward 6 who are concerned, they're mad, they're upset about this ordinance. I don't know how or why, after all these years, that someone now feels 12 aldermen, two per ward, is too many. And this ordinance, if passed, will reduce the number of aldermen down to six, but will still serve the same number of people in their ward. Doesn't make sense, does it? <clears throat> As of now, and I think it was just mentioned, each ward has some like 10,000 citizens. Ward 6, we have a little bit more than 10,000. Again, my constituents are upset, they're not happy. Our city is growing by leaps and bounds. We saw that from the last census. Everybody knows how much we increased in 10 years. I don't have to tell you that. We're growing in all sections of Hendersonville, not just in one ward, all over. And now some wants to reduce the service to our citizens by saying we have too many representatives. I don't see the logic. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. To me, I feel there's more to this change than you and I know. 
That's my personal feeling, okay? Could it be the upcoming election? If it were me, I don't think I would make this ordinance part of my campaign. <laughs> and believe me, our citizens do not forget. <clears throat> it may be that some of us vote are retiring and not seeking another term and just want to make a change in our administration. I don't know. I'm just concerned. But what I do know is how this so-called ordinance was presented to us in general committee some two weeks ago. To say the least, I was shocked and was the only one out of the three that voted no. Number one, it was not on our agenda. Every committee, every meeting has an agenda before the meeting, maybe a week ahead of time. You know what's going to come up that night, and you can prepare yourself for that meeting. <clears throat> but this ordinance was not listed at all. Now I know why. The committee <clears throat> heard just what's on the ordinance tonight. That's all, they, that's all we heard, what, what's right here. I'm not going to read it. <clears throat> Nothing more. Our chairman, who is the sponsor, had no ordinance number, no number, although we got one tonight. I think it's uh, 16. <clears throat> the research and detail that always accompanies a proposed ordinance was not provided to us. The sponsor did not even discuss this with our mayor. The thing that really got my attention in the committee meeting was only two people knew about this. Two. The chairman and our city attorney. Do you hear me? As I mentioned, out of the three committee members, I was, again, the only one that voted no. The other two, yes. The other item that concerns me was about four committees. You know, we have these committees, and they're represented by three individuals, except the special project. I think it has the chairman of each, uh, each committee. <clears throat> that concerns me also. But I'm sure someone has got it figured out about the committees. This brings me to another concern. I reviewed this BOMA meeting back on September the 14th, 21, during the redistricting discussion, which was brought up earlier by the sponsor. There was a question changing the number of wards, and we were informed. And I'm going to read exactly. The attorney, attorney Bradley was asked about changing the number of wards during the redistricting discussion. He responded, eventually, eventually, that eight is the maximum number of aldermen Hensville can have if we change the ward. And if we change wards, eight is the maximum because we go into a different cycle. <clears throat> Bear with me. Now, that discussion was about changing wards. I don't want to get you confused. That was about changing the wards, what brought that up. <clears throat> but we go on to, to 12 aldermans, He's, and it, it states here in the report, that eight is the maximum of all Hendersfield can have if we change the wards. We have 12 aldermans now because we are grandfathered in. It's apparently caused by, it's apparently linked to the charter. You follow me? It's apparently linked to the charter. 
<clears throat> the report goes on to say one of the aldermen asked if Hendersonville could have an at-large alderman. I'll read it. The answer from my attorney was no. We don't have a private act charter. That was the answer. <clears throat> when I read other articles from the staff report, and I'll find that in just a minute. I am prepared. <clears throat> Page uh, 564 under the staff report. If this ordinance is adopted, the 2022 election will result result in the city having nine aldermen, as previously mentioned. One in Ward one in Ward One, one in Ward Two, one in Ward Three, two in Ward Four, one in Ward Five, two in Ward Six. Mr. Peterson will be an at large alderman. That that's so good now. <clears throat> Do we have a private act charter now? I don't know. Can we get one? That's above my pay grade. So according to what I just read, we have an alderman now at large. Mr. Peterson will be at large alderman. He'll be working with six aldermen. We have a uh, alderman at large now when back here on 2014th of September 21 no we don't have a, pr a private act charter I don't understand but yet right here Mr. Peterson's going to be at a large alderman if it, if it's fascist you figure it out <clears throat> you know, I, I think two all two almonds at large may be beneficial to the city to work with six almonds. I don't know. At large almonds could have a certain responsibility for the city, like being in charge of trash, drainage. Paving, potholes, just my suggestion. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm so, uh, I think I'm upset the way this is brought about, especially through general committee. Bam. And only he and the attorney knew about it. And he kept asking the attorney questions and questions and questions. And I'm not downgrading anybody, don't get me wrong. I'm just speaking from the heart. I care less how anybody feels. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. But I speak facts. And I speak for you people out there, especially Ward 6. Please, please, board members, don't vote for this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Waters. Alderman Hayes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, during the redistricting, do you remember at one point we literally voted on whether we could maybe have four wards? And uh, Mr. Edwards and Mr. Clary and myself, we all voted for that. We were the, the three that voted. So from that time um, until now, I've always felt like we needed to somehow reduce the number of aldermen on the board simply because it's cumbersome. It, it, it is cumbersome, but I know how to count, and I know uh, that this is not going to pass, so I, I don't want to die on a hill either. I think that uh, uh, about a little over two weeks ago, I sat down and had lunch with uh, William Stiles, 
And the conversation came up at that time about is there any way we could do it or when should we do it? So the motivation for me was not only reducing and making government more conservative, smaller, save some money, but also um, would, it, would it work better uh, in terms of uh, just doing our day-to-day our -day, uh, business as a, as a group of aldermen and mayor. So it's something I've, I've, I've felt for quite some time that it was a good idea. Um, and um, I do like the idea of smaller government and more conservative and saving money as a fiduciary. So those are the reasons that I'd support this. Alderman Hayes, thank you. Alderman Dixon. Thank you, Mayor. I attended the general committee two weeks ago when uh, this was put forth. Um, this ordinance is asking us to vote on reducing six aldermatic seats. Think about the fact that that represents half the citizens in the city. A 50% reduction. You've already heard tonight from aldermen proposing and sponsoring this, that this is about reducing big government. But it is absolutely not. A reduction in government means lessening oversight, reducing our regulations and programs, reducing city government seats means only one thing, and that's a reduction in representation. Yeah. of the people. Much needed representation for a growing city, right? And there's something else no one's brought up tonight. There is also a recommendation in our books tonight on page 565, if anybody wants to look it up. It's in the ordinance report, summary report that we get. It's to increase the salaries of the remaining six. Okay. okay. But we heard that this could save us money. Wow. Um, but what was presented in the general committee two weeks ago is that this was proposing, we're proposing this because our chief operating officer is taking on most of the alderman's work. Folks, if that's happening, we're doing something wrong, okay? While Mr. Eckenroth has been a great addition and a blessing to the city, this board, and the people, he's not going to be with us forever, okay? But the reduction in Alderman, once completed, it will be with us forever. Yeah. Okay? We've heard that from our city attorney. I don't want to be disrespectful of anyone, but I've heard from many constituents in my ward and outside my ward for the last two weeks. Many, almost all of them surprised by this. And here's why they're surprised. In the past, their requests, their emails, their texts, their calls have gone unanswered. Okay? So, having said that, I'm going to want to continue operating our city government with 12 seats. I ask this board to actively please represent your constituents and not with self-interest. Thank you. Amen. Alderman Dixon, thank you. Alderman Collins. <laughs> Alderman Collins, go ahead. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> Alderman Still Collins, waters. go ahead. Um, sure. Um, when this, when Russ first brought this up to me months ago, this concept, I had not really even realized that it was an option. And um, I started to read about it a little bit, and then during redistricting, it was like, okay, this isn't going to happen. I don't need to worry about it. Um, and then the mayor brought it up and again and before the May primary and said, this will probably be coming up soon again. Okay. So I started reading like everything about this. And when you start to Google what size board, that kind of thing, 
what comes up is systemic issue, systemic issue, systemic issue. So what is the systemic issue that can be caused by the size of a board? And it says that, um, not it, because it's kind of everything I've read, indicates that when a group, the larger a group of people, the more likely there are to be subgroups within that group. In high school, we had cliques, and here we have a gang of seven or five or whatever it is. Um, and y'all can go ahead and laugh because it is funny. Um, but so you get these subgroups in division. It makes it harder to build consensus. It makes it harder to have unity. Is that a problem? I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe not. Because the same information talks about diversity of thought. And diversity of thought leads to sound decisions. How many people do you need for diversity of thought? Where do you cross the line where you're just arguing for the sake of it, but you have enough opinions to be making sound decisions? I don't know. So I read about when you have too much division, too large a group. I mean, certainly at some point, you wouldn't want 30 of us up here, right? Um, there's a tendency for one group to be labeled as good and one group to be labeled as bad, rather than people who just happen to have opposite opinions. You get accusations of, when it's a municipal board, backroom politics. You have standoffs. You have trust issues. You start to have feelings of being manipulated. And why is that a problem? If you still if you still have diversity of thought, you know, we all signed up for this. So why does it matter if our feelings are hurt? It doesn't, honestly. But the problem is that the community starts to take sides. And now you've not just got a board that's divided. You've got a community that's divided. Or the majority of people don't take a side. They disengage. And to me, that is a real shame. Is that where we are? As a board, are we dividing our community? I don't know. But when I read these things, I'm like, I don't even think they did a study. I think they just came to our meetings. Like, this is us. Let's be honest. And it's a problem because at the national level, diversity is what it is. The, the diverse, the headbutting. But at the local level, we have situations where we just have to be united. Praise God, our prayers were answered last night. And our officer was not seriously hurt. Had that gone differently, we need to be united. We at least need to be able to build a consensus. And we consistently fail at that. You've seen it tonight. So, I mean, and we can blame personalities, but that's exactly what I just said was going to happen. Bad, good, this person's this, this person's that, instead of just somebody who has an opinion that's different than your own. Okay, so these things I've been reading reference studies that say diversity of thought is achieved between five and seven people. That's why the best standards, best practices indicate a board should be six to nine people. Well, I guess not six because odd numbers, right? But um, unity is important and consensus building is important. However, so I came into tonight's meeting, I was just like, this is the thing that we need to do. This is going to help the community. It's going to help our board function better. But I've heard some things tonight that I hadn't considered previously. Well, of course, I had considered the workload. And I don't really know how to predict the change. Under the transition now, I would be the one still here for Ward 5. Ward 5 would, would be going from 13,000 people to 10,000 people. So it's going to change anyway. I don't know what to think about how the workload is going to change. And I'm not going to lie, y'all are kind of a lot sometimes. <laughs> But um, but it's been manageable. But I will say it's not like 
I take Monday and he takes Tuesday. We're each responsible for every issue. We don't, we do sometimes divide like we'll talk to each other and say, you need to call, you call this guy and you call that guy and then we'll talk and figure out what we can do to help these people. So we do split the work a little bit, but this isn't gonna double the work. It's not half, it's not like that. That's just not functionally how that happens for us anyway. Um, I guess I'm not supposed to say who, but somebody who sent us all an email today said something about how one, you might feel more comfortable speaking to one alderman than another, and there are certainly people who contact Jonathan and I never hear from them and he just tells me about it and vice versa. So that's kind of an issue. I do think that's meaningful to me. Um, um, and you guys were, I'm sorry, I shouldn't refer to you, but the comments, a lot of people talked about external forces. I don't really know what that means. I think that might be something that you see happening in state or national politics that maybe doesn't really trickle down to here, but I want to learn more about that. Uh, Mr. Waters brought up how it would affect committees. I want to learn more about that. I do love the idea of at-large aldermen. I don't know how or if that's achievable for us. But um, the pay raises, that's something I wouldn't support. And I know when the mayor wrote this report, he was just saying that these are the potential things that could happen to the fiscal impact. I didn't read it as being his recommendation. But I don't think that we need to make so much money that it's... I don't want it to be a situation where the aldermen are paid so much that you want to hang on to the job because you need the income. I think that we should be here because it's a service that we're doing. So I don't think I wouldn't support any significant increase, probably none, no increase in alderman income. I mean, it's fair that we get paid a little bit because there are expenses. I mean, yeah, they kind of can add up sometimes. Um, I didn't have a speech. I was just making notes. So sorry. Um, the, so, but the money, one way or another, that wouldn't be a factor in my decision making because I feel like this is a very big systemic issue that we need to be honest with ourselves about how well we function or don't function as a board and how that impacts the community. Um, I want to, I'm going to vote for this because I want to pass it to the second reading and give it full consideration. I think it's such a big issue. It deserves that. It deserves the opportunity for us to have more citizen comments. And the only thing I did have a question about is with the transition, which is a whole other can of worms, but if we don't do this, which I, we're not going to because there's no support for it, um, I mean, just I just want to give it, I want people to really fully consider it. I think that's the least we can do. I think that's the least we owe our constituents is full consideration of these ideas. But um, I think we have to have, we have to have seven people elected because Ward 2 needs two Alderman, unless I'm mistaken about where Alderman Phillips lives, I don't know where you live, <laughs> but I, I, is the, would that be in the new ward too? Alderman Collins, I'll get to that in just a few minutes. Any other, any other comments? I, well, are we going to deal with how to fill ward two sure. at some point? Sure. Okay. Nope, that's it for me. Alderman Collins, thank you. Um, Alderman Dixon, did you have your light on? Okay, sorry. Okay, let's go to Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when this was first brought um, to my attention with this new ordinance, I mean, I read it and it just made good some good business sense. And um, but before I get into that, um, I just would like to 
um, read the fiscal impact. I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that uh, Mayor Clary had written this about the salaries and what was in here in the fiscal impact part of it that um, Alderman uh, Dixon was referring to, and I'll read it to you. The current salaries for aldermen are $88,800. That's everything for the whole year. Presumably, with half as many aldermen, the city would need half the salary, saving $44,400. The board likely would use that savings to raise aldermen pay to compensate for taking on a greater burden of work. It also likely would raise the pay for the at-large alderman. He would be representing six times more residents compared to his current role. And that fiscal impact on the staff report was, was written by the mayor. So just want to clarify that. Um, I've been an alderman, this is my third term, so almost 12 years. And I can honestly say that Ward 3 has probably had dis a dysfunctional other alderman for at least half that time. So I was doing all the work of, of the alderman because there was things that happened with um, the alderman moving out of the district, not telling anybody, and then he had to resign, and then another alderman was... Uh, had some legal problems and they had to resign. Another alderman had to take on, took on another position that was in conflict with that job. He had to resign and then, in, uh, hence, another alderman was actually arrested several times and she had to resign. So it was, uh, and I'll tell you that I was doing the work. I, I, thank God <laughs> this guy next to me. <laughs> uh, one alderman in Ward 3 for probably half of that time. So, um, and it got a little cumbersome, yeah, but um, we managed. I mean, we managed to, to solve some problems. We managed to get some things and projects worked out in Ward 3. So, um, I don't see a problem with having representation for one alderman per ward. But that's just, I'm not dying on the hill for that, though. <laughs> Like, like the other said, I just thought it was a good. It made good business sense. It made, saved us almost fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, we have the CLO uh, who is doing a lot of interference, and issues never even get to our attention anymore because of the wonderful job that he's doing for us. Um, smaller government, yeah, it is going to be smaller government. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. It's a it reduces the size of government. And that's one of the, you know, big conservative principles, remember? Smaller government. Um, I did the research on the cities, and uh, I was pretty shocked to find out that only Clarksville has 12 aldermen or city council members. Um, and Hendersonville has this, the same amount. Um, I'd like to ask the city attorney a question, though, on the alderman at large. Um, is there any, th any um, option to have, like, six aldermen plus an, two aldermen at large? Is there any option for that in our charter? The only way you could do that would be like if you did with the referendum on term limits. You'd have to ask the legislature to change our charter. So there is none at well, the present time. It's, let me sort of explain how we get here. You can't directly say we're going to have six at, six by ward and one at large, but by the action this board took with redistricting, that's the situation you've created because Mr. Peterson no longer is going to live in his ward after November. So he can't very well be the ward two alderman if he doesn't live in the ward. Ward two is supposed to have two aldermen. That's how we get to the 13. And what our charter says is it talks about how that you can reduce or enlarge the number of aldermen based and says in accordance with 63101. That's a section of the Tennessee Code that's our charter. And when you go to that, it says that in the case of a ward that has been abolished, and in this case, Mr. Peterson's ward's really kind of been abolished because it's been changed. It's not the same ward he represented. 
that provide that that alderman whose term extends past the life of the ward, and of course Ward 2, as he was elected, is not going to be in existence after the November election, shall serve as an alderman at large for the remainder of his term. That's where that comes from. It's not something we can directly do. It's just the, the outcome of changing a ward in such a way that somebody doesn't live in it anymore. That's how we get there. Okay. But, but to, to formally say we want six and one at large or two at large, yeah. we have to, we'd have to have the legislature provide us the opportunity to do that. We'd have to ask for legislation. And on the issue about whether or not we could ever change it from six, we certainly could change it from six. I was quoted as saying we couldn't. We could always change it to seven or eight. You're allowed to go up, up to eight is, is the maximum. And with respect to the private act, the only, the only cities that could have private act charters, that ended in 1951 when the Tennessee Constitution was amended. And then we just had the three general law charters, one of which is ours, the mayor and alderman charter. And that's where we get these rules. And in, in 1986, when this form of government was adopted, 12 was the option that was presented by the state law at that time. In 1991, the legislature decided that was too many and they made it where any new city could not have more than eight. And that's where that comes from. The, the, so that's, that's sort of how we got to where we are. And what I would ask this board to do is hold make Hold on, it, John, John. You're here to provide information. You're not here to lobby or well, advocate asking, or ask the board to do anything. I was asking my question. You're not okay. here to ask us to do anything. Uh, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask you to, no I'm going to ask you to obey our charter, which says two alderman per ward. That's what okay. I'm asking. Alderman Cunningham, anything else? Well, I, I particularly wanted to know how um, Alderman Peterson's role was going to change after the November election to the city attorney. He is next person to speak. I'm sorry, Alderman Edwards is next person to speak. I read you something from our, um, uh, from our county election uh, uh, coordinator a little while ago. We are not abolishing any wards. If we were abolishing a ward, we would have fewer wards. Well, no. The statute that was read to us was about abolishing wards. We are not abolishing any wards. He will continue to serve the people and and the number of seat that he was elected to. We can't change that. Okay, that wasn't my question. I'm sorry, I thought that was your question. Um, my question was, with Alderman Peterson, what ward is he representing? He represents Ward 2, and he will continue doing that until, the, until his term is expired. But isn't is that a violation of our charter nope. if he doesn't live in the ward? Not at all. Not at all. I would disagree with that. Our charter requires aldermen to live in their ward, yes. specifically yes. in state law. exactly. So, exactly. <clears throat> so there are provisions when you redistrict. And it's a situation we cannot force him out of a term that he was duly elected to. Well, nobody's forcing anybody out of a term. Alderman Cunningham, anything else? We'll go but to actually Alderman of, Edwards. That was mm -hmm. part of the uh, charter. I mean, it's a violation of our charter. Alderman Edwards. Um, okay, so just so we're, we're clear, um, is it eight? If we go to eight or less, Alderman, we could never go above that. Is that correct? Can't go above eight. That's okay. correct. Um, and so if we're going to get to, if we're going to have anybody at large, that would have to be by private act, private yes. charter. Well, they, have, they won't do a private act because we've got a general law charter, but they could do something based on population like they did for term right. limits, you know, because we're the only city in the state with anywhere right. near our population with this charter. So <laughs> I just, you know, I, it, at first I was not opposed to, to less aldermen. I mean, I can, I guess I could see the, the benefits of it, um, but maybe if, if our, if we had, you know, got our ducks in a row a little more, maybe um, if we had, and I have heard the argument from people that if they don't like what their one alderman, does, if they can't get along with one of their aldermen, they're not doing what they want, they can go to the other alderman. I see that. But maybe if we had something way down the road where we had uh, two <coughs> aldermen at large, we had six aldermen and two at large, somebody doesn't like what their alderman uh, is doing or they don't, they don't, um, the, that alderman is not doing what they want. They can go to one of the two at-large aldermen, or go or go to the mayor. The mayor represents everybody. So, but uh, you know, maybe if our ducks were in a row more, and uh, and I'm not, <clears throat> that that may be something that we can consider in a way down the road. But but tonight, I feel this is being this is this is too rushed. Uh, it's too much. We just went through the redistricting. Um, and with the county, the county just switched to, to, to one commissioner per, per district. Um, I just think this is being rushed too much. If we had a better plan in place, uh, it, it may be better. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I can see the argument of less representation. Um, and I can also see how um, the benefits of it. But I just cannot 
I just cannot vote for this tonight with, with going to, to down to six aldermen. I, I just don't think that's a good idea. I think it's, uh, even though, you know, I, I may, I would be affected by this. I could be the only alderman in Ward 3. I don't, I'm, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I would be taking on a more of a workload, but, um, but I, I just, you know, I, I couldn't support it anyway for those reasons, and I wouldn't want anybody to think I'm doing this for any kind of uh, self-serving reasons. So, uh, with all due respect to the, the sponsors of this and those that brought it forward, I just I just cannot vote for this tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Edwards, thank you. Alderman Peterson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to be referred to as governor. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, uh, reduction in aldermen will save the city $44,000, I believe, is the correct number. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we just passed a budget for $66.8 million. $44,000 is a drop in the bucket. Please. Anyway, we, we cannot reduce the aldermen because the taxpayers just bought us new chairs. <laughs> Uh, Mayor, I'd like to move to vote. Okay. We, Thank have no, you. we have nobody else in the queue, so we don't actually have to vote on that. All those in favor of uh, Ordinance 2022-16, please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. I'm sorry, I need to change, I need to change my, my vote, Jason. All those in favor, press the green one. All opposed, press the red one. You can change your vote until I stop the vote. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So that fails four to nine. Does anybody was anybody else confused in the way they voted? Need to change their vote. So the people voting in favor of this is Alderman Cunningham, Alderman Brown, Alderman Hayes, Alderman Collins. Everybody else voted against it. Next on our agenda is item ten, and that's resolution 2022-30. This is a resolution naming certain park land in the city of Hendersonville Heritage Park. Alderman Skidmore. We have a motion from Alderman second. Skidmore and a second from Alderman Brown. Any dis uh, Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. D and forgive my ignorance on this, but did, did this go through our naming committee? Yes. Yeah, you'll see in the, your packet that okay. went through the naming committee on the Parks Board. Because we did have an email of concern about it today, and I thought their points were valid. Anything else, Alderman Petrelli? No. Thank you. Alderman Skidmore. Yes, thank you. I won't take just a moment, but... Um, it did go through the naming committee, which I'm um, the liaison from the board, and it was a unanimous vote. Um, there were there were several names that were brought out, but really, uh, heritage sounded was actually the most proper uh, that came out of the committee. Um, it's it kind of identifies with Rock Castle, and and there's not much to to say bad about heritage. You know, so there, you know, a lot of people, you know, can't get all bent out of shape for a heritage part. Um, but at this point, I, I, you know, and I kind of agreed with, uh, to the, the committee's, um, discussions over it. Um, wasn't heated. Everybody worked really well. It's a great committee. They're, they're, they all work really well together, which we should be proud of. But that's, that's what, and it came up to this heritage and everybody agreed. It was unanimous. Unanimous vote on that. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Skidmore, thank you. Alderman Collins. Did, I, I might just be wrong about this, but did this go straight from committee today to here? Or was it in committee two weeks ago and I just missed that? It, it was two weeks ago. It was? It, it wasn't tonight. No. Okay. I, um, I felt like some of the concerns expressed in the emails... I got more than one, but maybe they were just to Jonathan and I, um, were legitimate. And I would like to defer this and have some more time for public comment. So we have a motion to defer. We have, we have a second from Alderman Petrelli. Uh, Alderman Brown, do you want to discuss this, the motion to defer? Okay. Anybody want to discuss the motion to defer? Alderman Robertson. I just have a question from, from Mr. Eckenroth. Did the Parks Board take this up, and what was their vote? Who, who can answer that question? Gotcha. 
So the naming commission passed it unanimously, and the mm -hmm. parks board passed it unanimously. The, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Gilly. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Robertson. Alderman Brown. I would like to suspend the rules and have uh, a representative of the Friends of Indian Lake Committee Chair come forth and talk about what uh, how how we got to this point. That'd be great. Both numbers, yes. Without, without objection, we're going to suspend the rules here. One's Representatives fine. of Friends of Indian Lake Peninsula, either one of y'all or both of y'all are welcome to come up. And of course, you're not obligated to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff Cundiff, uh, Chairman of the Board of Friends of Indian Lake Peninsula, also uh, Chairman of the Ad Hoc Committee for the development of this park property. So. Alderman Brown. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, this has been a, a long project, uh, maybe more than some people up here realize what the, uh, how it got to the Parks Board and how it got to the Naming Committee, which both voted unanimously. Um, can you give us a, a five-minute synopsis how you got there, Jeff? Yeah, be pleased to. Um, so we set out um, three years ago uh, and solicited a very large community-wide survey searching for park names. Uh, we, we put together a, a long list so people could, you know, look at those, maybe pick from that list, and then also it was just open to you submit your name and, and we'll bring it forth for consideration. Um, we received hundreds of responses from that community survey, and from that it kind of bubbled up to about three top names. Uh, we took those names to the, the committee that was formed for this park development, uh, we talked about it there. We um, also took it back to the Friends of Indian Lake uh, Board, and that then the Heritage Park name was then recommended to the Parks Board for consideration. Parks Board heard that name, and they voted unanimously, unanimously for it. Um, and then it was sent to the Facility Naming Committee, as we had talked about before, and then after that, it went to the general committee, and it's here tonight for y'all's consideration. So, and this has been going on for about three years, working through this whole process. So, thanks. I, I think that explains it pretty well of, of how we got to this point. And um, I don't think it, you know you had you had a lot of people, but Heritage kept coming to the top. But there was other names also on there. Um, but it, it it does seem like it's been about three years to get to this point. So, I can't. Thank you for doing that. I can't vote to defer it. I think I think it's time we vote on the name and and, and get that put put to bed. Alderman Collins, are you withdrawing your motion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Alderman Petrelli, are you withdrawing your second? Yes. Okay, Thank we're you. Back on, we're back on the main motion. Alderman Brown, anything else? Appreciate that. All those in favor of resolution 2022-30, please press your green button. Those opposed, press your red one. We're missing somebody. There we go. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Next, we have resolution. Jeff, and uh, kind of thank you very much. Um, next, we have resolution 2022-31. This is a resolution establishing a public information officer position and amending the job classification list and pay table. Uh, we have a motion from Alderman Robertson, a second from Alderman Hayes. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is a fantastic idea. Um, Pat Campbell often talked about this as well and, and another position, but <clears throat> it's so exciting to see this come to fruition. I'd like to be added as a sponsor, and I'm going to support. Thank you. Okay. Without objection, we'll add Alderman Petrelli as a sponsor. Any other discussion? All those in favor of Resolution 2022-31, please press the green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we're back on the items that were initially on the consent agenda. We're on second and final reading of Ordinance 2022-15. This is an ordinance amending Ordinance 2021-22 as amended to reflect an adjustment to the city's 2022 fiscal year budget. Alderman Skidmore. So moved. We have a motion from second. Alderman Skidmore and a second from Alderman Peterson. Any discussion on this? All those in favor of second and final reading of Ordinance 2022-15, please press the green button. Those opposed, please press the red one. 
That passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we're on actually item number two, which is resolution 2022-32. This is a resolution repealing resolution 2017-43 with respect to funds preserved for land acquisition. Alderman Brown. We have a motion from Alderman Brown, a second from somebody to my right, second from Alderman Robertson. We do have an amendment that we need to make because of a typo. Uh, Jesse or Robert, Jesse, can you help us out with that? So the amount on the resolution should... Page 16? Yep. Should be $193,487. Okay. We have 197487 printed in our uh, packet, but it should be 193487 Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to make that change. Alderman Hayes makes a motion, a second, but I think there's Alderman Robertson again. Any discussion on that item? I have Alderman Cunningham and Alderman Peterson in the queue, but is it for this item or for the main motion? The main motion. Okay. Again, we're changing a figure on page 16 to 193,487. We have a proper motion, a second. Did you get that? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please press the green button. Those opposed, please press the red one. That is unanimous. Now we're back on the main motion. Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Um, initially, uh, and I just want to give background to the board that wasn't on the board in 2017. Um, initially, the reasoning uh, behind this resolution was to avoid um, a was to avoid what happened with the Beatty Farm purchase, um, which I did not vote for, simply because we didn't have $3 million to spend and we had to go borrow it. And I wanted to avoid that in the future. So I was one of the supporters of this original resolution, which meant that we were going to um, set aside 1% of the previous year's operating budget in the current year's budget each year for for the purpose of land uh, for per, for the purpose of purchasing land in the future if it comes up again and we would have the reserves to do it and we wouldn't have to go borrow the money uh, one of the uses of that was to pay off the debt that we had incurred with the Beatty farm the debt payment every year uh, which was around 250000 Okay, thank you. And then the balance of that would still will remain in that fund for any, until that debt was retired. The balance of that fund would, the balance of that money would stay in that fund until that debt re was retired, and then we would put the full 1% into that fund. So, um, for us to sit here and repeal it now is it, it really goes against my grain because looking back on the Beatty Farm purchase, I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty in twenty seventeen. That was a great deal. If you know, if you look at it today, I mean, that land's probably doubled in price between now and then. So it was a, it was a great deal, but um, it was a total financial decision that I had made. Um, and, and and that that was all there was to it. So I wanted to avoid that by cre we wanted to avoid that by creating this resolution to be able to do that. So we didn't have to go out and borrow money. And um, I I still can't support the repealing of it. it. It just goes against the intent of the original resolution. Um, and just can't do it but thank you mayor thank you alderman cunningham alderman peterson thank you mayor i wanted to make an amendment that we designate the 193,487 to go to the bradford berry house restoration so we have a motion do we have a second alderman peterson 
second from Alderman Dixon. Uh, Alderman Peterson, go ahead. Anything else? Yeah, um, it's in uh, staff reports on page 18. Okay. Bradford Berry property is listed as one of the options. So I just thought we've received 100000 from the developer for repairs, and I thought um, this would be a great addition to help with the restoration project. I don't know if you all know that we've been given the Bradford Berry house next to Aladdin. Hold on, and, Peterson, uh, can you hold on one second? Yes. Um, Jesse and John, are we appropriating money with the resolution if that's the case? We're not allowed to do that, is that? Um, are we appropriating oh, money with yes. this amendment? That's true. I like where you're going, but I want to make sure that what we're doing is okay. Yeah. So the, uh, the intent of the resolution was to repeal the previous resolution, and the resolution did talk about uh, those funds being used for parkland expenses, but uh, for it to be an actual uh, budget uh, expense, it would have to be an ordinance that's through two readings. So uh, the resolution lays out an intent mm -hmm. to uh, use it, appropriate it for park okay. improvements, but it does not specify that. What it does specify is the repealing of the previous resolution. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, he's right. If we want to appropriate the money, it takes an ordinance on two readings according to our charter. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rule that one out of order. However, it's something that we can do. We can start work on tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Peterson, I appreciate that. Um, Alderman Skidmore. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Um, believe it or not, I'm going to probably agree with uh, my colleague from Ward 3 about this ordinance. Um, I was in support of it the last time it came through because uh, Alderman Petrelli and I in Ward 1, we have very limited land that is left, but what is there is either big acreage or small but enough to do something with with the city, like maybe a little park or something like that, or an extension of, par of the park. Because I don't know if a lot of people are were here, but I, do you all even remember Horner's Boat Dock? Do you all remember that? Horner's Boat Dock? I, yeah. Well, there's, some, there's a strip of land right down there that, you know, with this ordinance would be probably a good chance to, to buy and, and keep it undeveloped. Uh, I'm opposed to high-density developments, and I'm scared to death that... The, the, the large lands that we've got uh, that's left in Ward 1 um, are going to be open to high-density development now. Whether it comes, whether it's not, I don't know. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it at this point, but I do worry about it. And I thought this was a good way to set up like we did, which I did support the Beatty Farm purchase, and I'm proud to say that I did. And if I had to do it all over, I'd do it again. Because I believe in it so so much, and I think it's proven to be a good thing. So um, I'm some in support. I mean, I'm I'm against the ordinance, and I would ask everybody to consider their own wards. If there's any available land, what's going to happen? Are you going to get high density developments possibly on your on the open land? Um, but if we have enough money. We're not going to have it overnight, but if we continue to put money in this account, uh, we still have an opportunity to do something with it. So that's why I'm, I'm thinking long-term here for, for our city, because I'm going to tell you, with all this discussion tonight, and I wanted to say a lot of things when I didn't, um, but I can tell you, as one of the longest-sitting aldermen uh, for better or for worse, I guess it depends on who you speak to. But um, we still have the best city, and no matter how we get mad and fuss and fight up here, we've got the best city in the world. We really, really do. We've got people that really think about where the city is going. Um, I've been through most everything tonight. What we've been through, I've already been through it. So I already have a judgment on it. But as far as this ordinance, I think it's a good, I think that 
the ordinance is good and we we shouldn't defeat it tonight um, and every like I was gonna my point was this the point I was trying to get to is every alderman should think about their own ward on this about the, the open land that they have um, ward two for example which now is ward one remember the fiasco when the guy from Jersey no 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 disrespect Arlene our alderman come in but the guy from Jersey came down here and said this is what I'm going to do. This is, I'm going to be good to you. I'm going to do this for you. Well, when somebody says that to me, regardless of whether you're from Jersey or not, I've learned to raise a flag when I represent the city of Hendersonville. Uh, I've been down that road. And so I would hope that you all would consider keeping this line item open to have our funding. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Skidmore. Uh, Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. So I do agree with um, the two previous aldermen. Um, for those of y'all that were not on the board when this came through in 2017, this was a unanimous vote to save this money. And, um, you know, when we, when we make personally big dollar item purchases, you know, we just don't go out and buy something. You save. You save money for your house, for your car. You budget for your bills. And going back to what Alderman Skidmore had to say and previous discussions, what we've had about longevity on the board, um, saving money for future land acquisition is something that is, you know, in my mind, possibly in the near future, but also so far out that None of us may even be here, but if we don't plan and we don't save and give the city and our, our current citizens and our future citizens the opportunity to be in a reasonable position to acquire land, then, then I feel that, I would feel that, that we had failed our, our duty. Um, I know, and I've mentioned Pat once tonight, but Pat and Mark and I had, had talked about the peninsula several times with, with you know, potential opportunity for land acquisition because everybody knows we're having density issues. As the population grows, there's going to be density. And I, I, I could go on and on and on. But I hope that, with all due respect to the makers of this motion, whenever there are you know, that there's potentially money available to go towards any department in the city, parks, police, fire, you know, I'm the first one to sign on to it and, and give that support. But I really feel that this is such an important issue for the future of our city. Beatty Far Heritage Park is irreplaceable. It is such a jewel in our city and the foresight that the board had to make that happen with a concerted group of thoughtful citizens is astounding and commendable. So the city needs to continue to position itself to be able to make those dreams a reality. So with all due respect to the, to the sponsors, I cannot support this. And I hope in the future years that the board will truly be conservative with this. Conservation, look at the base root of that word, to conserve. Thank you. Alderman Petroli, thank you. Alderman Robertson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I support this, res, this uh, uh, resolution for the following reasons. <clears throat> if you turn to page 18, the staff report, um, I think it was last year, or it could have been early this year, this, this board funded a park study that looked at long-range uh, needs of the park. And uh, there were several needs that it mentioned that we had. One need that it said we did not need was more land. Uh, if you look on page 18, we now have the Beatty Farm property. Uh, it's not developed. Uh, I know we've gotten a grant to, de to develop it some, but uh, we, need to, we need to develop that property, park. The Durham Farms property, we have developed the two rugby fields there, but 
there's bukus of acreage across the creek that is laying vacant that belongs to the city for parks. We don't have the money to develop it. Uh, the Caldwell Linden property, undeveloped land at Volunteer Park, and it didn't even, the staff didn't mention uh, one is Forest Park. Uh, Forest Park is part of the development plan, gave the city several acres for trails and hiking and bikes. So uh, there, there, our own study that we commissioned said that we had sufficient land for the future. Uh, when we looked at other cities, our comparable size, we were ahead of those cities with available land. We have in the Parks Department some immediate needs that we have not been able to fill with the budget. One is uh, some lights on some fields for uh, better utilization of our fields. Uh, there's other things that, that are ne needed in the parks. I just don't, I want to put that money to use. Uh, I believe in a savings account. We, we have a, a rainy day fund now that is compliant with what the comptroller has suggested. So uh, I, I believe that it is prudent to use this money uh, a, a on present needs that we have in the parks. I would not vote to, to spend it anywhere other than parks because I want to honor the original intent, but I want to use that money to start developing some of these parks that are sitting vacant, that are not doing anything. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Robertson, thank you. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple questions, just I guess of Jesse, probably, maybe Mr. Gilly, I'm not sure. Um, I'll, feel, I'll throw the question, you can feel the answer How about that. Uh, we discussed this uh, about pulling this money out of reserves and using it for improvements in the parks. We, there was a couple specific things that we, we discussed, um, but if we, we, we repeal the resolution, it's gone forever, it's repealed. So we will not be adding money back to the fund to pay for Beatty Farm, pay for an acre of land here, or whatever we do with it. So is there, I guess I still want to make sure there's a guarantee that we'll use this money exactly what we talked about in enhancing the parks now. Um, is it, if once we repeal it, the money's sitting there. So uh, we've already got, we've got, one out there for the Bradford Berry House. Uh, there's a lot of things we could do. I think uh, we can talk about the Bradford Berry House if you want to. We don't know exactly what we're going to do with that, what kind of shape it's in. So if that makes any sense, Jesse, try to answer it. Yeah, it does. So the, the resolution was written <clears throat> to repeal a resolution that was um, to improve the park. So in the spirit of that, um, this current resolution mentioned improvements to the existing park so to utilize utilize the funding that was meant for future parks for current parks but it is a resolution <coughs> to repeal the former resolution it is not appropriating money for the budget that would have to come back to the board so that 193,000 is basically sitting in an account that is unusable right it, it's reserved for a specific purpose so this would remove that uh, specific purpose and just free it up as general fund dollars. So to use it for specific purposes, it would have to come back as an ordinance to BOMA. Okay. Um, you know, I was on the board in 2017 and, and when we were doing the Beatty Farm and, and this resolution came up and I, I remember how hard that was to get where we were. Uh, I, I definitely don't want to really go backwards on anything. But I, I'm like Alderman Robertson, I would like to see this money utilized to enhance some things in the park so people can use them now. Um, uh, lights, flags, uh, for flag football, for pickleball, I mean, uh, we had talked about that, used it for pickleball as well. Is there any way, this is probably a Mr. Bradley question, that we can move, leave this resolution alone and move this money one time to utilize it for something like that? Or is it best just to leave it alone? I don't know, that may not be a very good question. <laughs> so, so well, go ahead, an appropriation order takes yeah, two readings, you can do that. Yeah. 
<clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm going to vote no. I've, spon right. I've sponsored it, but I'll come back and vote no on it uh, <clears throat> just because I remember how hard it was to get the resolution done to begin right. with. Alderman Brown, thank you. Anything else? Alderman Waters. No one else in the queue. I call a question. Well, we have Alderman Cunningham. Again? <laughs> Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I'll Alderman be real second. quick. Do you, do you want to rescind your motion to call the question, Alderman Waters? No. Okay. He would like to. He would like to make a motion to. Call I, the I don't. I don't want to take back my motion to approve. To, to move forward. Okay, I'm sorry, with it. Alderman Waters. No. Would you? Are you making a motion to call the question, or are you, we going to continue with discussion? Call the question. Do we have a second? Okay, I'll 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 get off the queue. We have now. I we just have, wanted to somebody else though. Mention that this is stays in the general fund. Hold That's on. All. So okay, we have nobody else at this point. Okay. So now we do. Okay. Well, here's the problem. We have a motion on the floor. <laughs> Alderman Waters, it seems like we have one person that would wish to speak. Would you like to withdraw your motion? And, is, and actually, you don't have a second at this point either, so. I don't have a second? Not that I heard. Uh, I, called, I, I called it back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alderman Edwards. I is it, so, Alderman Brown, are you, re, are you, um, I'm are up. you repealing your? I mean, are you going to uh, remove your resolution from the agenda, or do you, since you're not supporting it, or do you want to? Mr. Robertson is part of that. I'm just. I'm going to vote against the resolution okay. that I sponsored. I've did that one other time since I've been up here. So. Okay, I thought you were the only, listed as the only sponsor. Okay, that's all I had. Okay. Alderman Brown, so. He's, he's I, I believe. You, no, you're looking the wrong one. Yeah, Alderman Brown, um, you're the only one in that one. It's showing that Alderman Robertson is right yeah. here on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Sponsor, so we can vote and move forward. Yeah, 20, 20, 20. We're ready for Alderman, <laughs> Alderman Collins. Did you wish to speak on this? I'll, I'll, move, I'll sign on as a sponsor so we can vote and move forward. With, without objection, necessary. Alderman Collins wishes yeah. to become a sponsor of this. I believe we're ready to vote. All those in favor of resolution 2022-32, um, the resolution repealing resolution 2017-43, please signify by pressing your green button. Those opposed, press the red one. That passes eight to five. The people voting in favor, are Alderman Phillips, Edwards, myself, Dixon, Hayes, Collins, Waters, and Robertson. Those voting against, our Alderman Petrelli, Alderman Skidmore, Alderman Peterson, Alderman Cunningham, Alderman Brown. So that was item two, and now we go to, uh, that was also item 11B, now we go to item 13. Item 12 has been removed, and that's the vote on the appointment of Bonnie Zakovich to beautiful Hendersonville. I so move. I'll second. And we have a second from Alderman Hayes. Alderman Collins, you wish to speak on, okay. Okay, you've got to press your button one more time, please. All those in favor of appointing Bonnie Zakovich to beautiful Hendersonville. Please press the green button. Those opposed, the red. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. You're fine. We need one more person to vote. Who are we waiting on? There we go. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we're on brief committee reports. Chairman Cunningham, Finance Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we had our Finance Committee t uh, tonight. Uh, we had several, uh, we had an ordinance and a resolution. Ordinance 2022-15, an ordinance amending ordinance 2021-22 as amended to reflect an adjustment to the city's 2022 fiscal year budget was recommended unanimously. Resolution 2022-32, a resolution repealing resolution 2017-43 with respect to funds preserved for land acquisition. Uh, was recommended two to one, and that was what we just voted on tonight. Uh, we had our sales tax analysis report, and uh, it looks like we're going to end the year with a wonderful, you know, with about 120% um, uh, year-over-year uh, sales tax, over $3 million. 
Uh, year to date, um, for the month, we had over 103,844 year over year increase. Year to date, we had $1.86 million increase. So, year over year. So, that's a wonderful news for our sales tax. Uh, our hotel motel tax, it looks like we are catching up. Um, we actually need to, needed to really uh, compare this to 2019, that was pre COVID numbers. But um, year over year now, we're up by $127,000. So uh, year to date, we've collected $392,000 on our hotel motel tax. And we budgeted, I think, less than $300,000. So that's wonderful news there, too. We uh, had our stormwater utility. We went over the different projects. And um, not line item by line item, but we we're completing some really uh, good drainage projects and we are spending our expenditures were 1.3 million dollars and that is the end of my report mayor chairman thank Cunningham, you. chairman Cunningham thank you chairman Skidmore Public Works uh, yes just briefly thank you mayor um, we had our Public Works Committee meeting tonight and I was late um, there was I, and I told the my distinguished colleagues that I served with um, there was this huge, I don't know if anybody else got caught up in it, but I swear to you, there was this huge boat going down Main Street that looked like it should have been in the Gulf of Mexico where, it, where I'd like to be uh, one day uh, here shortly once I get through this heart deal going on with me. But uh, just for the weekend, I'd love to be down there in the ocean somewhere. But anyway, this boat was coming through town, and it was taking both lanes up, so I was stuck like everybody else was in that fast lane trying to get around this thing. So I came in about 15 or 20 minutes late. Uh, my vice chair and the secretary, they were doing such a good job of the, of the meeting. But we were going over my point in, in, in telling you is tonight we had a resolution that will be coming here shortly. Uh, 2234 is a resolution for acceptance of the streets and Durham Farms, and we passed that unanimously. Uh, we went over the stormwater project list, and these the list will probably be mailed, uh, emailed to everyone on the board to let you know uh, what is what is on the list and what isn't. And if you have some other issues, bring it to Public Works so we can take a look at it. Um, we had a, our FEMA reimburse update. Uh, we are still waiting on the money to come to come back here and we're waiting for one more report that should be done probably by the next meeting or the meeting afterwards we should have it from FEMA um, one thing I want to say I think Sarah's already gone but if you could direct this to her um, Jesse 170 uh, Chesapeake Harbor has a grate that is out that is br it's probably broken and we need to take a look at that, and I'll be out in the morning to take a look at it anyway, but I'll drive by. But it's uh, 170 Chesapeake Harbor. There's a great, and I think that we need to take a look at that. Um, we had some other uh, things that were going on, but I'll reserve that until our next Public Works Committee meeting uh, report then because I know the hour is late. Thank you, Mayor. Chairman Skidmore, thank you. Chairman Brown, General Committee. Thank you. Special call meeting tonight on Ordinance 2022-14, an ordinance amending the city beer regulations to allow the sale of beer at golf entertainment centers. That will be coming before you in our meeting on 728 um, with a two-to-one recommendation. Uh, the, the gentleman who is proposing that will be here to also propose it to you that evening. Thank you. That's our report. Appreciate that, Chairman Brown. Chief of Operations Report, Jesse. Like to uh, congratulate Helen Morris, Morrison and Elizabeth Rickman Vaden. They just completed level one of their municipal management academy. Um, our fire department put out a fire at the beginning of this meeting, so thank you to our wonderful fire department. Probably the most important thing that makes everything else pale in comparison is that Officer Cole Farrell is home safe tonight with his family. So thank you, Officer Farrell. Um, thank you, PD, for all that you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. You've, 
you've got my report in your packet, and next thing, we need to have an executive session. For those of you that are here with us uh, in person, we're going to leave for a few minutes. We're going to go into a room over here, and only the 13 members uh, of the board and the city attorney are allowed to attend that. We still have to come back and finish the meeting. Fortunately, the only thing that's left on there is adjournment. So I can't tell you if it's going to take us two minutes or if it's going to take 20 minutes. My best guess is probably somewhere between 5 and 10, but it all depends on how many questions we ask our city attorney. The words, only thing we can do there that remind you all is ask questions. We cannot deliberate. We cannot discuss. We can ask questions of our city attorney, and that's it. So why don't we go next door?
Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I have a question for Mr. Bradley. I guess Mr. Bradley is the parliamentarian expert, uh, but I, I also have a book that I have been reviewing and um, on this, and under Robert's Rules of Order, a motion to reconsider may only be made at the same meeting where any motion was carried or lost. That's on page 31 of the Standard Code of Parliamentary Procedures, the fourth edition. This is uh, an amplification of Robert's Rules of Orders. Mr. Bradley, is that correct, that, that a motion to reconsider a main motion that has carried or lost can be brought up at the same meeting? That's correct. You just read it, so yeah, that's correct. That's what Robert's Rule says. All right, Mayor, I want to I want to call for a motion to reconsider the motion on term limits. Second. Okay, we have a motion, a second. So, um, who was the second? Alderman Peterson. Yes. Okay, um, both of you were on the prevailing side, I assume, mm -hmm. and I believe from my from my notes here that's the case. John, would you agree that they're both on the prevailing side? My recollection is, yes, I okay. think they both were. Okay, so first we need to take a, take a vote on the motion to reconsider. We are not discussing term limits. We're not discussing that ordinance at this point. We are discussing a motion to reconsider. So any discussion on that? Alderman Edwards. But it has to be the, the person on the prevailing side. That's why I just asked that question. To, yeah, okay. Um, well, you, what, what was your question? So my, I, I, my question is, are Alderman Robertson and Alderman Edwards, on, were they no, on the, Alderman Peterson, on the prevailing side? No, because no. it passed. Yeah, it, fa not. it failed. It was a failure. You didn't, you didn't announce it, but it failed because they had to have nine votes and only had eight. The so then, uh, then uh, it would have to be someone that was in the, uh, that was one of the other to change the vote. The whole idea of the rule is that, that you get a different outcome. And as long as you're not you know, somebody that's not willing to change their vote, like that voted against the change, okay. as long as they're not bringing it up, it would it'd take someone like that, like Mr. Brown could bring it up. Good, good, good point. Yeah, that's why I asked because they're, they're not uh, prevailing. But, but party. if the chairman sees that that the vote could change, no, that, sir. That can, can you can you cite me where that that is that it has to be on the prevailing side in Robert's Rules of Order. I don't have it in front of me, Mr. Because Robert. I can't find it. I okay. can't find it that it has to be a motion to reconsider can be made by either side. Okay. It's my understanding from reading Robert's Rules of Order. Well, you've got the book in front of you, and I don't. I'll be happy to research if you want to, and we can take, we can, you know, take a little break. I can look at it. I, I don't think my opinion is going to change about it. We've always said that the purpose of that rule is that it's so that the vote might change based on someone changing their mind, not that it might change because someone went home. Well, I know it's going to change because we've had several aldermen leave that were on that side. So I, I know that it's, it, now the motion will pass. It won't get nine votes, though. It's still only got eight. Of the of the people here is what it says. Two thirds of those that are here, isn't that right, Mr. Bradley? We talked about that at the last meeting when this came up. On some things in our chart, it says two thirds of the entire membership. On the term limits legislation that the general assembly passed, it did not say that. No. So typically, you would think it would be two thirds of those that are voting on that it. are but, voting. But John, that's not what you said two weeks ago. You said that eight would be applicable in that situation. That's what I just said. Okay. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what I just said. So, okay. so I said it would be of those voting. Oh, so, sorry. so I, I would like to call. I would like to call the. Well, I can't call the question. I've got the motion, but in my comments, I'd like for us to go ahead and vote, and then he can do the research, and I'll sh I'll show him the citation that I have, uh, in Robert's Rules of Orders. So I have I have the book that, that we that the Board of Mayor and Alderman years and years ago said that we would use as our rules, and I think you're right. I think you're right. So we have a motion to reconsider, and we have a second from Alderman Peterson. This comes from, uh, this comes from Alderman Robertson and Alderman Peterson. Uh, any discussion on the motion to reconsider? Yeah. Alderman Edwards, go ahead. Okay. As much as I would, I would love to win this issue. Um, I did. I do have a synopsis. It's, it, I don't know what website this is from, but it's Robert's Rules and the motion to reconsider that I had pulled because of an issue that was coming up tonight. And in this synopsis, it said it must. A motion to reconsider must be made by a person who voted on the prevailing side of the motion to be reconsidered. Of course, that doesn't cite to what rule that is, um, but it, it is a synopsis I got online. I can show it to you. Um, but I, well, it's would, a rule we've always gone by. I know that. But, because but, come would up the but would the prevailing side be four votes? 
Was yes. it four votes? That, that would not be the prevailing side. It's the prevailing side if it takes nine to pass something. So, we lost so, it, so we so, can't. So here's, here's, I think we have a difference, though, is that the prevailing side under Robert's Rules of Order is the eight. The prevailing side in the situation, or at least the, the law for the state of Tennessee, is that it's, it's the four that matters. But if we're operating under Robert's Rules of Order, and obviously state law as well, the prevailing side to me seems to be the, the eight people who voted in favor of it. But they didn't prevail. That's the, that's the problem you've got. And there was, there was some confusion about that when you didn't declare that the vote failed. I mean, I know some people thought you should have said it, said it failed, but whether you said it or not, it only had eight votes. And, it, it, and, and, and the scenario on bringing it back up, I think Mr. Edwards is correct. Like I said, I'll be happy to research it, but uh, that's the way we've always done it in the past. That you had to be the, the idea of being that you can't just bring something over over and over again unless you unless you are changed your vote. The idea is someone on the prevailing side to change their vote by bringing it up again because then the outcome might be different. Well, the prevailing side, uh, uh, they have changed their vote. They're not here to vote. That's they not, left. That's, the, that's not a change. So, uh, so, um, John, what about a motion to renew? Let me read you what I have on the motion to renew. Making a motion again after it has been defeated is called renewal of the motion. As is obvious from the names of the motions to rescind or amend something previously adopted, those motions only relate to things that have been adopted. What, however, if the matter concerns a motion that was defeated? Suppose, for example, a motion to make a contribution of $500 to a worthy charity is defeated at one of your monthly meetings. You cannot simply make the same motion again at the same, mo same meeting. But after the meeting is over, so that it is not too late to move to reconsider, if you feel the assembly has made the wrong decision, the motion to make the contribution should have been adopted. This solution is very simple. All you need to do is make the same motion again at your next monthly meeting. So we could make this motion at the next meeting to renew. Am I correct? Well, you, you could certainly bring it back up at the next meeting. There's not any question okay. about that. We've still got till September before this has to be decided. But I'm not saying that the motion to rescind is, is incorrect, though. What's the damage of us voting on the motion to rescind? And if we find out we did something wrong, or, or renew. I mean, we the, do, we, the, the we way I read this, at, at, it, this says at any meeting or convention and on any main motion that lost, a, a motion to renew can be made. Okay. So, so, so what I've got here is that the motion to renew has to happen the next meeting. So that's an option, but not for tonight. The motion to rescind, I don't see what damage there would be is if we voted on a motion to rescind, took action, and if we find out later on that the action was inappropriate, then it negates the action that we took. Reconsider. Uh, re reconsider, I'm sorry. Reconsider. Can we take a recess to... We, we, got, we got to take action. So we still have a motion. It, so we have a motion that we, need to, that we need to do something with. If you want to make a motion to recess, I will come back to you in just a second. Um, but, John, what's the damage if we take... If we vote on a motion to reconsider and um, we take a vote and then we consider the motion on term limits uh, and, we, and we do something different, what's the damage there if we find out later on that that needs to be negated? Because your action's already been taken, you would have to rescind that action. I mean, I could mention some other things we need to do that on, but it's getting kind of late at night. I mean, I, I, I think this is a real simple solution. If, if Mr. Edwards agrees with my interpretation, he can just abstain on the vote, and there won't be nine votes. or won't be eight votes, rather. So we have a motion in a, in a, in a second to uh, reconsider the item on term limits. Um, we also have a motion to, uh, to recess, which is appropriate at any time. So do we have a second on the motion to recess? We do not. So... We are just voting on a motion to reconsider. We are not actually voting on the uh, on whether or not uh, yay or nay on the uh, on the ordinance for term limits. It's just a motion to reconsider. Any discussion on that? Yeah, I, have, uh, I, st I think I still have four. So the motion to reconsider. I mean, the motion to. So we're trying to just um, undo what we did. Like that would only take seven votes. Would that take seven votes? Takes a majority of the people here. I don't know. I mean, as much as I would like to prevail on this issue, it just doesn't feel right. They're, the two aldermen obviously left early under their own volition. Um, three. Okay. 
Any other discussion? Alderman Edwards, thank you. thank you. Okay, so we have a mo. I'm sorry, Alderman okay. Phillips. I'm sorry, I have a question. Um, you have the book, and Mr. Robertson has the book, mm -hmm. um, and you couldn't find where it says in there that it had to be from the prevailing side. You still couldn't find that no, in the, the book? No. Okay. <clears throat> no. Okay, that's uh, what I was asking. Appreciate it. Anything else? Sorry. Thank you, Alderman Phillips. Any other discussion on this? Go ahead, Alderman Collins. Does everybody have the same version? I mean, those of you who have it, do you have the same version? So we uh, don't. You know, they, okay. We, we don't, and that might possibly be. Who's the, the newest one? So it's not the newest ones. It's just the um, newly revised. So um, <laughs> that's that's the one that our, uh, that our ordinance from, I think, 1979. But it's what was the law in 1979, and we have not updated that. We've not passed so Robert's yours rules again. So is probably more accurate than... This is the one I've been using for five and a half years. It's the one referred to in our ordinance. And so. which one does yours say? So does it say prevailing or it doesn't? Um, it it does. Okay. But I think we both agreed that prevailing is the side that had the most votes. No, prevailing is the side that wins. I'm real confident about that. If if, if there had been the prevailing vote, we wouldn't be having this argument about whether or not we're going to bring it up again. So all. Okay. So Alderman Robertson has asked to withdraw his motion. Alderman Peterson, do you wish to withdraw your second? I, I, don't, I don't want there to be any perception of trickery okay. and there deception. <laughs> These people left, I mean, they left the dais with this is still on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Turn his mic on. They, they're not doing their job. Turn his mic on. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alderman Robertson. I, I'm I, sorry. I, I'm I sorry. Right on. Go ahead. The hours long, so I will I will withdraw and 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 let. So I do think we need to explain that Alderman Cunningham, uh, Alderman Petrelli, and Alderman Hayes are no longer here, um, and uh, and that's why we're stuck with ten people, and that's why part of this decision is so. Mayor, crazy. the book that you've looked at, you think that we we I mean the book that I've looked at, I think that we can do it, but I think so too. But you're, but John, you're saying we can't. I'm agreeing with Mr. Edwards with, with his interpretation of Robert well, because he's still here. Well, <laughs> I, I want your interpretation. I want. I don't want you. I agree with that. We've always said it had the prevailing side. That's the reason. I mean, the idea is so that you can't just. Otherwise, someone could just say, "Well, I'm going to bring it up again." They could do it ten times at the same meeting. And you know, those just, just and, of, and those that voted against term limits were on the prevailing side. In this case, yes, they, the, the, the side against it prevailed because it took nine to pass and it didn't. So the, those, those were their prevailing side on that. And, I, and I, I, think, I think your inclination a minute ago probably was, was probably the best, but it's your, your call. <clears throat> well, Mr. Bradley, you are to provide without, without side. Is there a procedure that we can bring this matter back up and have another vote on this tonight? In my opinion, when the chair said we're going into executive session and probably when we come back, all we're going to do is adjourn. There was nothing else on the agenda. There was no motion to reconsider right on the agenda. To add it back to the agenda now would probably take another two-thirds vote. No, I don't think there's a way it can properly be done tonight. If we had it, done can it. Be, it can be brought back up at the next meeting, though, or the mayor could call a special meeting if we want to reconsider it. Is there a motion that could have been made immediately after that vote? Well, like while everyone was here and it was still an agenda item, sort of, but even there, it's, it's, it's all, it would be awkward because there was an awful lot of discussion about it. I mean, it wasn't it like somebody changed it. It's still got to be the prevailing side, even if it had happened immediately. That's, that's true, that, so that would not have changed it because of the prevailing side aspect of it. Alderman Robertson, um, do you want to pursue a vote or do you want to withdraw? Stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. Let's, let's vote, and then if we, if we mess up, then we'll, we'll correct it at the next meeting. But okay. I, I want to vote for term limits. I want to get it to the Election Commission so the citizens can vote for term limits. Okay. So we have a motion and properly seconded uh, to rescind, uh, excuse me, reconsider the earlier motion that this board took. Uh, we are not considering term limits. We are just deciding whether or not we were going to reconsider them. Uh, all those in favor, please press your green button. Those opposed, please, please press the red one. This is just to reconsider.
Need a couple more folks. Okay. Nope. Still one more. So uh, that passes seven to two with one abstention. Our abstention is from Alderman Edwards. Our no votes are from Alderman Brown and Alderman Collins. Uh, voting for is Alderman Skidmore, Peterson, Phillips, myself, Alderman Dixon, Alderman Waters, and Alderman, Alderman Robertson. Um, so now we're back on, we have approved a motion to reconsider. So now we're back on, let me make sure I say this correctly. We are on second and final reading of Ordinance 2022-09, an ordinance relative to term limits for members of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Any discussion? All those in favor of second and final reading of Ordinance, I'm sorry, Alderman, Alderman Skidmore. Letting the Board know, because as an Alderman, and I've sworn to uphold the Constitution of this country and this state, I want to let you know that I got an email uh, from Peg, um, apparently there was an emergency. That's why she left. I don't know about anybody else. I don't know about the other all, my colleagues, but um, and you can look and everybody can read it, the text if they want to look at. And I said, um, she goes, um, do I, I? I had an emergency. I need to help her, and I don't know who she was talking about. And I, she said, do I need to come back? And I said, this is what I said. I'm not sure, um, but if, if it were me, I would come back because she is my colleague, even though she did not vote the same way I did. And it would be shady if I didn't. And she said, okay, I'm driving back. So I don't know about the, any of the other aldermen, but that's what was texted to me. So... So with 10 people here, um, in order for this to uh, get a two-thirds majority, it would require seven votes. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor of final reading of two, th I'm sorry, Alderman Collins. I am just going to talk to give Peg time to get back, I guess. I mean, I think this is shady. I don't even know what to say. I, I'm tired. Okay. I don't have anything else to say, so I guess I'll stop. So, um, with the understanding, we will come back to Alderman Collins. Um, Alderman Robertson, go ahead. Blessed is the peacemaker. <laughs> so, uh, there's, you know, I, I don't want to use parliamentary procedure, legislative tactics like have been used in the past. I don't want to do that. Peg had to leave because of an emergency, so I'm going to withdraw the motion, and we'll bring it back up at the next meeting. Maybe by then, better heads will prevail. Okay. So, so I, I withdraw. So here's where we are, though. We don't actually have a, a motion on the table. We had a motion to reconsider that passed. So really what we just need to do is have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'm a, I move to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn from Alderman Robertson, second. a second from Alderman Dixon. All in favor, please press your green button. Those opposed, press the red one. I, try. I don't, I don't want to. Eddie, you have to vote. I don't, I don't know. Eddie, you have to vote. Somebody still missing somebody. I don't, I don't mind. We're missing somebody. <laughs> That's okay. That passes okay. eight to two with Alderman Skidmore and Alderman Peterson voting no. Was that intentional? Yes. Okay. We're adjourned. <laughs>